Hello everyone. Welcome to Sunday evening. The song you just heard was Anthropocene by Lossal, which as you all know, is one of my favorite artists. Creates all kinds of really down tempo, slightly discordant, uh, minor chord, ambient sort of music. And I got to see him live once and it was incredible. I always describe seeing him live as like a like a communal dream where the concert happened at midnight and we all were sitting around in this place called the Ice House, which is like a restaurant and bar like place downtown. Or not downtown, it's actually kind of further away, but it's a big box shape. So we're all sitting at different floors on the top and on the bottom. And so I was uh music just sounded like you just heard and we were just kind of all in a trance just like listening to him and we just sort of like drifted away in sleep really good time that's a cult oh no Uh, yeah, and hello everybody, Saladongs, Avianite, Too Quick, Too Fast, Kelvin, Doxy. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look at that, Koyani Skatsi. Um, hello, Nightsides. Yeah, I won't be doing any VR tonight, even though I do like to stream that pretty often. Or not often. As you all know, I only stream like a couple times a month, but... Whenever there's something interesting to do, I'll usually stream VR. But yeah, I only have a, I have a Vive, but I also have Gear VR and a um, Oculus Go for work-related purposes. But I really enjoy the Vive. Uh, so, stream tonight is going to be hopefully mostly shortwave radio listening, but it is also the uh, one year anniversary of my little discord community called ludo crypto and well that's that's the logo that i came up with and it holds a secret and then going to just so that it's not total silence let's have some subtle ambient winter noise because I'm weird like that. Yeah, Avian, you saw the game that I'm playing tonight retweeted. Yeah, it's had a sudden surge of interest. I saw that Rev from Vine Sauce was playing it earlier too. Hope it gets attention. It's a really interesting little game from what I can tell. Yeah, that brings me to that part too, is that I'm also going to be playing something very briefly. It's called It's Winter. And it's a Russian game that is... Let me bring it up. In Russian, it's a Shacha de Zima. And Shacha de... I don't know exactly what that's an acronym for, but Zima is winter. And I looked on the website, and it has to do with like a... It's part of like a, a student... Not a student project, but like an artist that made poems in a book of some kind and also a song or I don't know it's very strange uh, but anyway so I'm going to go through just a really brief rundown of what's happened over the last year with Ludo Crypto um, so first of all I'll put a link to it in the chat uh, it's just a, a discord where I and other people who are like-minded to myself. We just all talk about weird stuff that video games have, like just unexplained mysteries or ARGs or Easter eggs and things like that, just because that, that kind of stuff has always interested me. And it was hard for me to find a place that had the right discussion going on that interested me. Like I've, I've been a part of Game Detectives for a while, but I haven't participated a whole lot in their stuff, but they've gotten so big and they're like a powerhouse of ARG solving and they have a, a lot going on 
the community is just so huge. It's hard to get just like get your voice heard and to have like one on one conversations there that they're just they're more of like solving community. So when I started this one up, I just wanted to be more discussion oriented. I mean, if we want to participate in ARGs and stuff, that's cool. We sort of uh, places, you know, people to find and to talk to. Um, but it started with Sea of Thieves because Almost exactly a year ago was the anniversary of when Sea of Thieves launched. And we all know Sea of Thieves had kind of a, a rough start just because people are like, oh, there's no difference between the closed or the open testing and the final release. But I saw that there was a lot of secret potential in the game. And um, right when I started the Discord, it was more Sea of Thieves oriented. I mean, it was always going to be about just anything no particular plan about what exactly is going to be talked about there or anything, but it started with Sea of Thieves because we all had interest in that. Um, and I really enjoyed Sea of Thieves. I didn't see much of a problem there, I, and I have like hundreds of hours in it. As of lately, I haven't played it a whole lot. Um, let me bring up one of the videos. So I got a lot of attention at first because I did a video looking at the potential of secrets in Sea of Thieves, and it's like one of my most viewed videos ever. And unfortunately, the game, even though it's a great game, it didn't really end up having as many interesting secrets as we had hoped. The artists in the game clearly have a lot of attention to detail, and that's like what my video focused on, was like all this environmental storytelling. So let me bring up little video that I made, which is the first time I've ever just sat down and made a video in, like, traditional YouTuber style. Um... And this was before the game officially launched. Sea of Thieves hasn't even fully released to the world, and already it's proving to be a game full of mysteries worthy of investigation. In this first ever mystery report, I will be covering several things that caught my attention pre-release. One of the most prominent points of interest is something called Lucky 13. On March 1st, 2018, the official Sea of Thieves YouTube channel uploaded a video titled Customization. When you skip to the two minute mark, a framed painting on the right side of the screen can be seen. And for only a few seconds, a superimposed word search puzzle will appear. Now, there's a few interesting things going on here in this word search, but I'll begin with the 13 words found at the bottom. It was discovered that after crossing off all 13 of these words, seen here in red, that a phrase could be made using the remaining letters, seen here dotted in blue. The resulting phrase is, no lemons at all. So I'm not going to watch the whole video, but um, so that's kind of where everything started. And this video got a lot of attention and um, just because people were craving new content of any kind in the game. And it turns out that this was a promotional thing for something called the uh, Quest for Golden Bananas. And as far as I know, I was the only Discord. Well, OK, this, this is an important point. I thought I was the only Discord that was at an organized effort to solve the Quest for Golden Bananas contest. It was a promotional contest that was supposed to um, just bring attention to the game, and it had lots of ARG-like elements where people would go out in real life. Um, there was a moment where we were looking at a webcam that was in Florida that was looking at a guy that was out in a boat, and he had the um, like naval signal flags that were lined on his boat. And we were all sitting there watching, and we were like looking at and trying to decode what the flags were, and everyone else there in real life was like, who's this guy? And he's just like making weird... He's like dressed as a pirate and just really stood out. And so they had all these ARG like elements and we had a great time working together with that. Like I'd wake up each morning and there would just be like hundreds of new messages I had to go catch up on. And um, But it also led to some of the first, um, like the first moral dilemma that I had to make or had to make a decision for because the problem with 
the contest, in my opinion, is that it had a monetary reward. So at the end of the contest, uh, whoever was the last one, the last team to solve the last puzzle would be given literal golden bananas that were valued at like thousands of dollars. So you know what money does to people is everyone gets a little like rabid and <laughs> ravenous or whatever the word is. And they just start thinking that like, oh, we got to do like whatever it takes to win because this is money. And so a lot of communities surrounding Sea of Thieves got started kind of tearing each other apart. And it was sad to see because I was just in it for the puzzles. Anyway, the decision I had to make, though, is that if we were all working together as one group, as like a collective, and if like I won, and then all of a sudden I'm like, all right, thanks guys, I'll just take this money and leave, you know, all like 40 or 50 of you that helped me get this, thanks. And I was like, I don't want to have to deal with that sort of dilemma of like, now I have actual money that was a result of all of us working together. I'm not going to like sit here and distribute like $1 to every person that was involved. And it just was like a frustrating situation. And um, so what I decided was that for the, the final three puzzles, I would close down all public discussion and we all had to break into smaller groups and continue working on our own for the last three puzzles. So I thought like, okay, that gives everyone a chance. So, you know, whoever wins really is most dedicated to it. And, you know, it's about the journey, not the destination. And, uh, and I was kind of proud of that. So then the final day comes around, we were all like sweating bullets and just like, oh my God, this is the final puzzle. We've been doing this for like a week now. And the puzzle ended up uh, being a big jump around social media to Instagram and all of these different things. And like, you could only have the Instagram app to access certain things. And like, I didn't have an Instagram account. So it was just a mess, I thought. And then people submitted and everyone's like, okay, I don't know who won. And then later on, it was revealed that the winner was the head of a Discord I didn't even know existed called the Quest for Golden Bananas Discord. And it was the head of that Discord where they all worked together all the way to the very end and basically a replica of exactly what I was doing, except they continued on and just gave the rewards to the winners or of the person that organized that discord. And then they got all the money and the bananas and all that. So I just kind of thought like, Ugh, money sucks. But anyway, that's what started the whole community. And it was, um, it was fun participating. And a lot of you guys still hung or, or kept hanging around so um that was a good you know, we started off running in the community um the rest of this video is just looking at all of the tiny little details and theories regarding sea of thieves and how it might it might have been leading to something more and then i'll just quickly run through all the other major changes that happened over the years um a lot of Petscop uh, episodes were released, and Petscop was an in a thing that a lot of us had interest in, and that was part of what encouraged me to think, like, we should have an, an organized effort to come together and discuss things like this, because uh, I did a stream here once where we watched all of Petscop together here on Twitch, and got a very positive response from that, and people are like, oh, we got to do that again. We should try to get together, and, you know, anytime Petscop comes out, so that happened multiple times where we watch Petscop episodes together. Um, they eventually added a GTA 5 section where we had a couple members uh, who were very dedicated to the theories regarding Mount Chiliad mystery and all of that. And Mount Chiliad is the that whole Easter egg thing was part of what got me really into Easter eggs and games. I mean, Portal 2 ARG is where I started, um, but uh, Mount Chiliad Mystery was sort of my roots as well, and I had no idea it was still going on. So Mount Chiliad and a couple people there were still discussing it and leaving like really extensive discussion regarding it. Um, and the YouTuber Not.4 ended up showing up on our Discord and discussing stuff too. I mean, he's like a, a huge name out on YouTube, and videos are very theory intensive, whether or not he made it obvious. Then eventually added a Fallout 76 section. 
Gee, how come I end up really enjoying games that most people don't like very much? Like Sea of Thieves and um, and Fallout 76 because there was a lot of like weird hidden stuff in 76 when I was doing some of the testing of the game and when it came out. And I also have a hun few hundred hours in Fallout 76. So I never ended up streaming much of it and had a good time and kept track of different secrets and things in that game. And eventually moved on to Red Dead Redemption 2, which as we know... Uh, RDR2 is absolutely filled to the brim with obscure secrets and things. It's like they almost were influenced by Mount Chiliad Mystery, I thought, and they inf implemented a regular feature in the game that was about exploring and keeping track and keeping notes of things. And you know, you have your like journal that Arthur would write out and make descriptions of stuff. So that was really fun, keeping track of all that. I never ended up actually playing RDR2 myself, but it was, um, I really loved jumping to different streams and YouTube videos and things like that in order to, to see what we would find next. And the game even has aliens and things like that. And then Deltarune came out and there's a lot of people in the community who were very into Undertale and Deltarune, and as we all know, that that was a really surprise release. And the creator was saying, you know, not to share publicly on social media any spoilers about it. So we kept it kind of in the down low and discussed Deltarune theories, things like that. And then now, modern day Ludo Crypto is primarily, um, we still have general channels and everything, just for like if any anything period like interesting comes out most in there but the game the blackout club has been a very high interest lately and i've been playing that i did a few streams of it and it's uh, changed quite a bit since then or my i guess i should say my position within the community has changed a lot um very much on the the side of quote unquote evil and I've had a lot of regular interactions with one of the um, voices or gods of the game called Speak is One. And I'm still engaged in that community and all the different stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. And if anyone's interested in like cooperative horror that has some like role-play elements within it, I definitely recommend the Blackout Club. I'll stream more of it again eventually. Um, I think I'm going to eventually stream with uh, I think Vidya Bum he expressed interest in the Blackout Club so they're and I think Max Sayo in chat yeah you I think you gifted uh, Vidya Bum Blackout Club too so extremely entertaining game okay so I don't think I have a whole lot else to say about the discord um, I mean it's literally just me and my interests and people who also enjoy that i actually have domains or a domain purchased i was gonna if the youtube series i ended up making more videos and stuff like that i probably have a website to make it easy just to say you know go to our website and then have like twitter and all that just on a very simple website so not sure where i'm gonna go with it i'm it's very opportunity based if a new game comes out that needs a space for people to discuss its secrets i'll be there for that um, kind of like some spontaneous things that happened is uh, Tomi, who is a member who has been with us since the very beginning, since Sea of Thieves, um, she, I believe, was the first on the internet to uncover the meaning behind a new game that was advertised by uh, Devolver Digital. At the time, it was sort of this obscure space-looking game and it was by the developers of Stories Untold. And Stories Untold is one of my favorite games in terms of how it tells the story. And it's very environmental based. Um, there's like no HUD or anything. It's all about you interacting in a 3D environment. It was really incredible game that I liked a lot. But anyway, that they had sort of a, a they had looping weird space video that looked pretty real on the Devolver Digital Twitch channel. And then they, like, we didn't know who the dev was at first, but then eventually we started piecing the details together, and Hitomi did all this research on on the planet of Saturn, 
and there's like a storm or something that's on Saturn that has a particular shape and this shape was portrayed within the video that was on the Devolver Twitch channel and everything just came together and like and she really pieced it together and uh, made it a public thing and we were like tweeting to the devs and eventually it was released to or it was made notice to us that it was uh, Observation it's the next game of stories untold developers where you you play as an artificial intelligence in charge of the lives of people on a like modern day space station. And that game's gonna come out I think this year sometime. Probably will stream it if I can get a hold of it. And then the last detail, and then I'll start up the game, is the uh, Death Stranding is of a lot of interest to people in the Discord well, and, you know, just the gaming community as a whole is really looking forward to Death Stranding, but that's something that comes across my mind all the time. I'm really looking forward to that game. But there was uh, Archelect, the Twitch, or sorry, the Twitter account that has like 800,000 followers or whatever. Actually, I think they reached a million, didn't they? I don't know. But there's been a lot of... Um, conspiracy theories regarding, you know, Death Stranding and what sort of connections, if any, you know, that it has with the Metal Gear series and, you know, clearly Kojima's past is showing itself in the design of Death Stranding and people are noticing that and little references to like Metal Gear and even some references to PT and uh, you know, within the advertising of Death Stranding. But anyway, that Archelect, which is a uh, an experiment that some guy put together on Twitter that is just a gigantic, like, it's a bot that looks for imagery that has qualities that get attention on Twitter, and it automatically tweets out images that are appealing to people. I don't know, the website explains it better, but anyway, it it suspiciously was tweeting out stuff that looked very reminiscent of Death Stranding. Like, had all the vertical lines that sort of drip out of the Death Stranding logo. It just tweeted those lines out one day. People noticed the connection, and it got getting more and more obvious, or more and more evident that there was some connection with Death Stranding. And Kojima was following the account, and Jeff Keighley's following the account. They're like, there's some kind of conspiracy going on here. So anyway, last year, towards the end, um, they tweeted out a pattern. It was just like several grids of dots that were all certain values. And it turns out uh, that it, when you clicked it, it would link you to kojimaproductions.com. And you're like, oh my God, it's confirmed. There's a connection. And now uh, we were working on that within the Discord, uh, within Ludo Crypto. And, uh, and there's a lot of like subreddits and people all over the place working on this puzzle. And someone else figured it out in its entirety, uh, you know, the, the whole secret behind it. But I was so close to, uh, to I think, being the first to solving it, but someone else got there. And it ended up being that the series of dots that you would extract the RGB values of each dot out, and you would make three separate grids of dots. There's just the ones that are red and green and then blue, but the, the original image was mixed. So you'd have, like, cyan, so you'd have... Um, you know, red and or pff, green and blue you would take out of that and some were white so they would exist in all three RGB and some were magenta and some were yellow so it was a whole interesting cleverly put together little puzzle and game detectives touched on it a little bit and that was really exciting so sometimes they have like spontaneous events that happen like that as well I'm looking forward to Death Stranding okay now, let's catch up on what you're talking about in chat. Uh, I don't think Kojima knows what Death Stranding is about. Hey, it's supposed to release this year, I think. Um, uh, Kojima was quoted to say that he had, that Death Stranding would release between the, sometime between the the anniversary of Akira and the Tokyo Summer Olympics, I think it is. I, I can't remember the exact things, but like the, the Summer Olympics, I believe, are happening next year. 
in Tokyo, I'm so off, like out of, or uh, out of the, you know, like I don't know anything about the Olympics. I haven't watched them in a very long time. But anyway, it's supposed to happen in Japan, and so I guess soon it release. Okay. We're going to put the, the ambient sound down. Um, so before I get into doing shortwave radio stuff, uh, I'm just going to play a little bit of this game titled It's Winter. And it was, it was uh, making the rounds on Twitter, and it's just kind of made by um, a team of a couple people, and they're both Russian. And the game has a lot of attention to the environment. It's meant to just sort of be a, like an emotions game where you don't necessarily have a specific goal. It's just meant to create an atmosphere and you wander around in this moody environment and it has a lot of detailed interactions. So let's see, I took a one year of Russian, so I can kind of pronounce words but I don't know what most of them say, like this phrase at the bottom here. Let's see, can my, is my cursor visible? Okay, yeah, it is. What does it say? Если игра видит себя странно, убедитесь, то ваш компьютер Sayat vet oh my god, sa sayat vet stvit istim istimi tribashnim tribashnim vzmožna vam luch luchie soch oh that is a hard schodit. Um, Pangrat ka drugu svolaya mošnim kompjuterom. So, the only words that I know of all of this is igra is game, uh, što is what, something about computer systems, and drugu is something about with your friends. When you have a K before something, that means like it's with. So something like your, the game is best with this and your computer settings should be done this way. Something like that. But anyway, people are calling this uh, Russia simulator. So it's, let's see how it goes. Oh no, I selected the Russian language. Wait, 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 wait. Restart. Okay. Um, and I got a, a chance to play a little bit of this before it got, or getting too far into it. And, and it's supposed to look really gray right now. Um, but my biggest complaint is that you move way too fast for a game that's about like atmosphere. So what I did is I have one of the most ridiculous control schemes set up where I have my left hand on a controller because I happen to know is how Unity generally works when it comes to um, control systems and all that. And even if you don't design a gamepad functionality in the game, it still will have uh, minimal usage, even if you don't design it to do that. So I can use the analog of the joystick to move slower and to make it more of an atmospheric adventure experience. I have my left hand on the left side of controller, my right hand on a computer mouse.
just interact with everything, even on a very minute level. Yeah, it lets me interact. Uh, I happen to know that using the radio kind of progresses the game. I'm going to look around real quick first. We have a note. Submerge yourself into timelessness. Don't prepare for anything. When all the troubles of this world will be knocking at your door, just lie to them. I've been waiting for you. And the bathtub is already full of water. I really enjoy it in games when you can just move doors however you want. You can kind of sneak sneak through them. But turn that off. You hear the sounds of steps. I always really enjoyed that sort of attention to detail when it just takes in atmosphere of standing still in a space. Sounds like plumbing in the above room. Okay, so I can even open the microwave and be like, be like microwaving banana. Been in there an awful long amount of time. Delicious microwaved banana. It's like even charred and darkened looking. I ate all of it, most of it, even the peel. Yeah, it sounded like the toilet above was clogged. Have I heard of the Taiwanese game Devotion? I have. I've looked into it in a lot of detail and the controversy surrounding it. It was a really good game. I don't think I would ever stream it, but I, I loved surreal horror of it and the detail. Like, look at Cool. God, it's like you can interact with every little piece. I kind of wish there were more sounds, like the sound of Drawers opening and closing and all of that kind of stuff. Now, what was the controversy surrounding it? It was a very, uh, it was a reference to the Chinese president, prime minister or whatever that portrayed him in, in an insulting way. So there's a bunch of, uh, Chinese people got very angry about it, and then the devs apologized, and then like the publishers of the game pulled out their uh, their connection with the devs, so the devs were just sort of left alone, and they got in trouble, and it was all a big mess. The game was taken off Steam for a while, too. Okay, I'm gonna make a, a meal. So, if anyone watches uh, Maseowski's on YouTube, you'll know that um, egg whites, like the shells, the white part of the egg, are an important nutritional aspect of, um, of eggs. 
And then I'll put an apple in there too. Now I'll just leave it in there. Anyway. No, the, uh, the offensive thing in Devotion was in the game. It was on like a poster on the wall. And it's since been removed. this you can take shirts like I've I've literally never seen a game that has shirts on hangers that move around like clothing should and it actually has the physics that a hanger should have and you can hang it back on to the rack that is the only time I've seen that the clock is even a little bit broken There is a cotton inside my head. If there is anything to blame, maybe winter. The door is shut. I'm not waiting for anyone. And we got a bunch of pills that are taken. What do I think of this low res textures, not so lo fi models? Actually, the models are low poly. I mean, obviously, physics like this is not a part of the low poly, low res aesthetic, but I think it works well. It might be kind of hard to tell on the stream, but there is actually, um, everything is unfiltered text or unfiltered, or um, unfiltered, uh, pixels. There's no smoothing going on. They're all nearest neighbor, hard, hard edge. Oh my God, I can't talk this no plow Imagine if you lived in this apartment, that would be a really nostalgic thing. To like, remember, you know, when it snows, the big plow with the bright light comes out. And I wish they had the audio um, equalization change, like low and high pass, depending on if something is outside or inside. I think that goes a long way when sound is muffled in the way that it that it should when there's things obscuring it.
This is my favorite show. better reception anywhere else. Reminds you of uh, Alan Wake, <laughs> definitely. Weird nostalgic sound. When you were younger, there, there was a forest on the house that would train. The train would pass through every once in a while, and the engine noises would echo off the trees and make the super otherworldly humming, and it actually ends up helping you sleep. I know what you mean about that, and in my situation, it was very weird where I lived next to a hospital for a while, and it was, um, like a key. And I would hear helicopters taking off and landing all night long. Now, most people would think that's a nightmare, but I actually really enjoyed the hum of helicopters taking off and landing all day and night. Saladong says, can I adjust the vertical hold? Do you mean like this? live next to a pond so all you hear are the frogs and I think that's something that everyone should do at some point is wherever you are right now just get a microphone on your phone or anything and just leave it recording in the middle of the room for like 15 minutes don't say anything into it just sit and record whatever noises happen around you because I once, um, I was testing my, my binaural microphone, which does a really good job at getting a sense of depth with sound. And you put the microphone, there's two of them, into your ears, and the sound is sculpted by the shape of your ears, and it makes like some of the most realistic sounds, sound recordings ever. But anyway, all I did was just walk around my apartment, and I left the place, walked out in the parking lot, and then I, I made this recording like four years ago. And then I came back and listened to it again. And I could tell exactly where I was at all times just based on the sounds alone. And it's like the kind of memory that you have for ambient sound around you is incredible. Like your, your ears can remember things oftentimes better than your eyes. But, okay, here we go, I'm going to progress things. Death is walking nearby, in line. Grandpa after grandma, mom after dad, sister after brother. My precious boy sailing on a plastic bag boat. The needle is your lord, and the fork is your holy lady. That's not terrifying or anything. And this radio here is kind of what got me thinking about doing a... Uh, doing some of the shortwave radio stuff after this. It's like, just leave the game running, like right here, next to the radio as we look at the snowfall, as I browse through actual radio. I can't tell if it's a pixelation, but I think I keep seeing a figure moving in the window across. 
Proctor's dead. Is that a Battlefield 1 Easter egg reference? Angels fly, Proctor's dead, or whatever that was. I need door slamming sound effects. I know I'm really tall. I'm like six eight or something. And I love how it just lets you manually knock. Dog, dog poo on the ground. I cannot tap, or I can't knock in Morse code, but I can tap in tap code, which I, unfortunately, even though I have Morse code memorized, I don't have tap code memorized. It would be, it would sound something like, I don't have that memorized. And I'm purposely going kind of slow because I believe this is short. Ah, uh, the mains hum. Certain frequency where like electricity makes a sound. I don't remember the scientific side of it. Oh my god, it even makes a different noise when it's a metal door. Wait, what? No, come back. There was a book inside here. No! Wait, 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 I, I kind of see it. Damn it. Well. And I'm the worst neighbor ever. Oh, is that was that a trash shoot? Maybe it did actually go down into the dumpster. Good thought. Just open the window by accident? Huh, didn't even notice. Yeah, I wish there were sounds for everything. Like, that's a big lesson that developers can take from VR. But in VR games, like, every interaction with physics generally makes a sound in order to make it that much more satisfying. Even if it's just a tiny little sound of, like, one thing hitting another, it really pays off in the end. Okay, I can't open this. Okay. I mean, I really would love it if this game contained some sort of deeper secret that we don't know about. Okay, that's my apartment. Wait a minute, I left the lights on. That is absolutely unacceptable. a motion activated light I guess
I don't know if we have any Russians in chat, but oh, uh, but I remember a long time ago when I was taking Russian language, I was playing Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, and there was a Russian guy in the server who was kind of around my age at the time. I remember his name was written out in Cyrillic, and it was uh, Jack Pirat, <laughs> like uh, Jack the Pirate. Anyway, that we talked for a while, and he would speak in English, and I would try to speak in Russian. And my, my Russian was way worse than his ability to speak English. But anyway, he said that he sent me a picture of what his apartment looks like, and it was exactly like this. Like, I've, I've heard that it's extremely common in Russia for people to live in gigantic apartments like this. And it's not very common for people to, to have an entire home to themselves. It says, Ya Tibia. Oh, it says, I love you in Russian. That's one phrase I know. Ya Tibia Lublu. Lublu. I also say, Uy Krasivaya. means, You're beautiful. Uy Krasivaya. Then I can say I'm beautiful. I can be like, uh, Ya. Wait, what is it? Ya, uh, ya Krasivayu? Or something like that? What does this say? Mir? I don't know what that means. That was really cool that that window that was left open up above that was covered in snow. Mir is peace. That sounds familiar. I think God is like book, something like that. Remember, I can say, Ya uh, ruski yazik. Like, uh,. I study Russian. I study Russian in school. Or, oh, my mailbox. Okay. Interesting that it's letting me know that. I'll just steal everyone else's mail. Oh, there's a book. And another book. Oh, the Mir space station. Yeah, I never made that connection. Peace. Also, Sputnik. Satellite. In Russian. Uh, what other phrases do I know? I know, um... Yan Yegavaru Poruski. Ya gavoryu angliski yazik. I don't speak Russian, I speak English. Uh, et, eta na angliskom? Is it in English? This beautiful fence. Let's... I don't have like a flashlight or anything. Like a maintenance closet or something. Even a really subtle specular on the snow. I love that when pixel art uses modern shading technology. party going on up there. Used to know a little bit of Italian. Interesting. I, I took a few years of Spanish, but I don't know much. I know Italian's a lot like Spanish. Who lit this? That it's around New Year's. I can say Snovium Gadom. Is 
that party apartment reminds you of freshman year of college. There's always someone's room that just has like bright flashing lights and like, wow, there's a hell of a party going on up there. Oh, we got colorful tires. Colorful tank. Truck. Tires. The kids. I can run also. There's an oven out on their balcony. That's cool. needs snow physics so I can build a castle. Yeah. Or a snow individual. Can't go inside these other apartments. Footsteps are a little slow compared to how fast I'm moving. You kind of see inside some of these apartments. because I'm moving diagonally if the game doesn't know how to handle footsteps for diagonal movement. <laughs> Sandbox is boring. A snowbox is where it's at. I can agree as a winter enthusiast. And I've been doing IRL streams of uh, just walking around in the blizzards. Oh, this guy's still going? Привет! Uh, that snow plow you can obstruct it yeah that is basically uh, Russian public transportation everyone just lays down in front of the snow plow If I can go further down the road that the snowplow driver was. And I can see inside here. Sir, you have a tree growing into your apartment. How does this make you feel? Snow is crisping under the feet. 
It seems there is nothing around here except the streets. I can't boast with anything but three lamps. Seven signs on it. Okay, well there is more going on. Producti, producti, products, plural. Salon, uh, Crosotti, Zli, or Eliza. I don't know what uh, Eliza's salon. <laughs> Alone, Krasati, Elisa. Or Elisa, maybe. Yeah, I could go for some product right about now. Yeah, that was the, the business couldn't figure out why they couldn't get any customers, and it turns out it's because they forgot to put a door on their building. No one could get inside, not even the employees. That was their downfall. Wait, is this the same place? Okay, I'm gonna switch to keyboard instead of my hybrid controller mouse uh, living in the future control scheme. Because I wonder if I can do any kind of platforming. I'm gonna do some parkour. Use my blackout club training. Oh, he's got a toilet. Toilet sitting out on the balcony. This is the same place. some uh, bunny hopping techniques. It's the worst enemy of old FPSs, or I guess FPSs without a bunch of uh, thought put into the controls. Their enemy is the Pythagorean Theorem. Because moving at a diagonal vector has slightly more magnitude than going straight forward or straight to the side. So, therefore, it allows you to um, move faster if you move diagonal. And that's like, in all of, in the Half-Life 1 and 2, that's used as like a speed running thing. Well, it's not immediately obvious if there's anything else I can do. The game said it was just supposed to be a sandbox. I enjoy the atmosphere. I don't want to spend too much more time because I want to get the radio stuff. I mean, if anyone in chat for some reason actually knows a lot about this, despite it releasing just recently, please tell me if there's anything I'm missing.
That reminds me, and I'm uh, sometime this week I'm gonna try doing a a sponsored stream, just because I'm so poor. Um, but I would just be playing Smite. But I think it's interesting because I have never played a MOBA. And it would actually be fun for me to try playing a genre that I know like nothing about. And then chat could backseat me to death and I would invite it. Because I would just have no idea how to MOBA. And it would just be for like an hour or whatever. I did play the original Defense of the Ancients when it was uh, Warcraft. Three custom map. And I played a thing that was MOBA like on StarCraft. It was called like Mercs vs. Tex. It had a similar idea. I played a lot of custom maps in Warcraft 3 and StarCraft. If someone doesn't like MOBAs and they play one anyway, are they playing Smite out of spite? Oh, that should be the tagline of the game. Okay, well, oh. I wonder if I could find that dumpster. A bigger question, or better question is, can I find my own apartment? I remember it was in the shade. If I don't find it, I'm going to restart. I feel like there's two circles of apartments. I can use the direction that the plow is going. Okay, so it's heading that way, and it was going the left when I looked out the window, so I think it should be this building that is where I live. I know that's a good a question that comes to mind is, um, how can you tell in Russia if someone is squatting it's like, isn't everyone squatting? Oh, here we go. Squatting in, in their apartment. Squatting. Um... Let's say Vidoch. Kind of funny is that um, in Russian, the word for stop is a really long word, like three or four syllables long. So they use the English word for stop on their stop signs just because it's shorter. I don't see, like, a trash chute. It would be by the stairwell. I didn't see any entrances on the other side. Oh, wait, no, here. Yeah, it should theoretically dump into that room that I was just by. Yeah, it does. You can see it goes down. I can't see anything in here. It is so dark. All right, well, we got... Let's drag everything out. We got a broom. Got Mr. Bucket. If, like, rigid body physics weren't as common in games as they are these days, I would spend so long just playing with these physics objects. Like, 
I played Trespasser a lot, which is like, I think the first computer game to feature physics, or at least physics simulation of like rigid body and even ragdoll to an extent. And that game is from like the early 90s or mid 90s, I think, way ahead of its time. It was janky, extremely janky, but it was amazing. And I remember stacking boxes and just thinking like, this is incredible that I can do this. Hmm, check the floor to see if it got caught on another door. What's the thing is like, does it just empty into the room? I'll leave all of these open. Oh, snow is clogging this one. Maybe it doesn't actually go all the way. Wait, here's a garbage bag. Can I put it? Wait, let's try this one. Hey, it went down. Now let's see if it's down there. Can't see anything. Magic. Yeah, I didn't believe that. Scared you. At least people are writing things like peace on the wall. And not like your mum. And also things like, I love you. I'll go back to my apartment, see if there's anything else. And then I'll move on to radio. stuck uh, I just don't know what else there is to do okay back in my place and I wish they had sound effects for the doors go back to controller where I can move slower Listen to the radio again. Everything's burnt. I left it cooking in the oven when I went outside. My delicious egg and apple stew.
I guess the last thing to do is to just like take everything out. See if there's anything else I can interact with. I can. Pack it. And if I designed a game like this, there would be so many different levels of secrets. Okay, we got all the silverware, rolling pins, knives. There needs to be more low-poly PS1 style games. There's actually a lot out there, like fan games. Um, like, uh, what's their name? Puppet Combo is uh, an indie dev that has been doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Their games are like hyper violent kind of playing on like the thriller kind of gameplay. But they nail the style really well though. I'll be a jerk and throw toilet paper in the tub. If you ever want to mache yourself, you fill a bathtub full of water, get paper, and flour and just completely fill the tub with it and then you lay down in the tub and you lay there until all the water evaporates and then you are trapped in a body-sized cocoon of paper mache so if you're into that kind of thing those are some tips okay let's tip over the tr trash oh there's a light bulb in here Got broken light bulbs. Now let's add all that to the stew. Also, broken light bulb, uh, articles of glass. Oh, it's all part of a daily balanced diet. Good way to get leg rot. I think that'd be the least of your troubles. Does it say da Damani Sara? Un Giarno Migliore. Is that a t Italian? Italian? I had a history teacher who always said Italian, and it was always so irritating. Time hasn't progressed much. Okay, is there anything in here? Shoes. Wow, okay, all of these uh books. A book with a golden band on it. This looks different. Hmm. Notepad. A lapis. Totally forgot how to say pencil in Russian. We got the video juegos. Igra, igrati, I think, or games, or igri, are games in Russian, you can say. Uh, I don't remember very many adjectives. What are these? Got dumbbells.
Mm, well, I think it's official. I don't think there's anything else to do. Can I break the light bulb? Oh, I can move it around. That's cool. Yeah, and they have real-time shadows. Break my window. Leave my door open to increase uh, my murder rate. The bag, paper. What do these shirts say? Salatudo. I need this shirt. Wait, not this one. Uh-oh. A shirt that just says despair on it. This is like a, a Hot Topic shirt. Take it you couldn't submerge inside the bath. I'll try that. Turn on the water. Instantaneous water. And a flush. Maybe if I flush enough times, I'll like destroy the plumbing of this building and the whole place will flood and then freeze and then all the pipes break and everybody dies. Okay, what if I bring TV over next to the radio and play them together? I'm sure it will sound very pleasant to the ears. Yeah, I'll take the TV outside. This is my life now. Let's make this cinematic. You know, this is a this is very conceptual what's happening right now. Is my TV battery powered, but it levitates exactly. I've escaped. Oh no! Oh no, the TV's gone! <sighs> oh well. 
my only companion. Besides Snowplow Guy. Guess I better go get plowed. This real question is, do I get plowed or do I do the plowing? God, the plows are on an infinite cycle. There's a second one. This is like a Truman Show moment. Discovering that our world around us is actually a stage. Is happening right now. Okay, well, I'm just going to assume for now that. Oh, what did I just click? Oh, it's a link to his Twitter account. Oh, he only has like a hundred followers. Well, I'm following him now. Developer's name, Alexander Ignit, Ignitif? Lanyok is his name. Okay, anyway. I'm going to do something a little experimental here. I'm going to make it seem like I already ruined the illusion because I'm telling you guys what's going to happen. I know it could seem like there are infinite possibilities on this radio. Leads out into the real world. I'll set this up. Then I'll turn on some enhanced snow effects. go. Oh god, it automatically puts the menu up? Shoot. That. Hmm. How am I going to do this? Okay, well, this has a cutoff here. Uh, I'm going to be starting doing some shortwave radio stuff. And to just briefly just describe what it is, is that, um, so as a lot of you probably know, that we are constantly in a state of being assaulted by 
thousands of different forms of radiation, no matter where we are all the time. And radiation consists of anything from sound to light to invisible light, visible light, and then just spans in high frequency, low frequency, as, you know, as far as the universe allows. Now when it comes to radio waves, a lot of people think about AM, FM radio in your car or things like that. AM and FM stand for amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, just different ways of playing with radio. Now shortwave is a particular wavelength and I believe it's, uh, there's an actual chart that shows exactly what it's like, but it's a band of radio signals that do not, that are not accessible by your radio on, in your car. And there's a lot of different uses of it. Um, it became a, a big hobby with the rise of radio technology in like, starting I think like the 60s or so, where people would have their own powerful broadcasting equipment in their homes. It became known as amateur radio or ham radio. Like a ham is like someone who doesn't really know what they're doing. So it was kind of like a derogatory term for radio operators that are just fooling around with equipment. Um, but they took the term and ran with it. They call themselves ham radios. But anyway, just everyday people, now they have designated amateur radio bands, they call it, where they can do anything within regulation, like whether it's just talking back and forth. A lot of people use radios as a form of a, like an emergency thing where they learn all the different codes and like government information and things like that in order to communicate like in examples like during September 11th when cell phone signals and things like that were just totally jammed that a lot of uh, radio operators are going and helping communicate using their own equipment. So in modern day, there's a technology called SDR, which is software def defined radio. And it uses modern technology to allow you to access radio antennas from anywhere in the world using a web browser and I'll bring up what it looks like so I'm going to break the fourth wall here break the illusion and show you guys my desktop there's a website is very handy that is called uh, the Worldwide Receiver Map. So these are various uh, public radio SDRs. So uh, with your browser you can access any of these and the, the bright red ones have space available. Some of them are limited. You can only have a few users at a time. Some are offline, but the location of where you choose to listen in on all of these extended receivers is to, um, it really changes the quality, or not quality, but of what kinds of signals you receive. And one of the fundamental pieces of what makes amateur radio so amazing, especially short waves in particular, is that they use the Earth's ionosphere to communicate. An ionosphere, you know, is like an electrical layer of the Earth. But when you send a signal in the United States, it goes up into the atmosphere and it bounces back down. Now, most radiation will either get absorbed or it will just leave the atmosphere and shoot out in the space forever. And But the ionosphere causes shortwave signals to bounce back. And when this was discovered, that opened up so many possibilities because it meant someone in the U.S. could communicate to somebody in Australia. And you could suddenly communicate all over the world using shortwaves. And just someone in your home could do it with your own home technology. So show some examples. Like um, 
Let's listen in on some a New York station. Hampton Bay, New York. Oh, a warning. I was considering even putting a warning on the stream at all times about this, but when you do anything with radio, especially in a browser, there is potential for very loud noises. <laughs> very loud, annoying sounds because it's analog. And the nature of analog is that it's intercepted by noise. So you're going to get lots of noise. I'm going to do my best because I can anticipate when loud stuff will happen and I'll warn you if there's going to be a loud noise. Um, there's a high chance that there'll be sudden, loud, annoying sounds. So, just a warning. Anyway. I'll, uh... This up, and I'll go to audio, and I'll mute within here, unmute up here. Okay. going to organize this. Um, so this, what you're looking at here, is called a waterfall for obvious reasons. And it's showing the intensities of signals, or it's showing different frequencies of sound when I zoom out and show the entire full potential of this antenna this will take a second notice how everything sort of bleeds down now where things appear more red that means that there's a very clear signal over there so this is everything that the antenna is receiving from people talking, from people communicating in digital modes. There's people communicating in Morse code. It's still a thing. People using things like teletype. There's FM radio. There's AM radio. You're seeing radar used by the military. You're seeing pacemakers. You're seeing the uh, some cars use radio signals for their alarms you're seeing there's just so much that can be received like this is a visualization of just the many few of the many signals that are going through you at all times so i'll just start with some examples of radio that we're familiar with i'll tune in to some new york radio if I can find a good one. Try this. I'll start... Oh, shoot. Go back. things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence. And this is something that is very common. One of the biggest uses of modern day shortwave radio is for religious stuff. We're going to come across endless amounts of preaching Christian stations, but it's not just Christianity. There's Lots of religions use shortwave radio because 
they can broadcast over countries that don't have big internet infrastructure and stuff. You could just grab a radio, really cheap radio, from the store and tune in to these kinds of stations. So it's used as like a form of like missionary work. So you'll get a lot of stuff that sounds like this. Shame on you if you have no more faith in your God than that. Some friends sent me an interesting book about old Mr. Man what's fun name. is because this is analog radio is we c I can make some really freaky stuff. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'll tune into a different station. And destroy. Followed by a trunk. A trunk inside. In the high sacred positions of our politics, our religion, our economics. And Mr. Obama is more truthful. And Mr. Trump. So we have a trumpet inside. You mean? It's in the... It's in the gospel. The power's in the gospel. All right. Now we go on. To everyone that believe it. To everyone that believe it. You gotta believe it. But when you believe it, there's the power. Well, if we confess our sins, isn't he faithful and just to forgive us our sins? Comes from all unrighteousness? Right. God looks on the heart, not just the outward appearance. How many people in Los Angeles are confessing their sins tonight, do you think? There aren't many confessors running loose. When things start getting more interesting, the further into the amateur bands of radio you go, then it just becomes a kind of a free-for-all of people that just kind of talk about whatever they want within, you know, legal bounds. That's Spanish. See, within the U.S., uh, Spanish is going to be by far like the most common because of proximity to Cuba, and shortwave radio is very popular in Cuba. Cuba. Um, as you go across Europe, you get like every language. And I'll go over to Europe in a sec here. From Havana, your every Sunday Cuban music show here is RHC. Today we're listening to Puerto Rican band Cultura Profetica. If you're liking it, don't go anywhere because here comes another beautiful song by them. This is Nasbeth. <laughs> 
Oh, some of the sounds you, you'll get out of this are really incredible. Like everything you see here are coming from something. So now, this is where all the cool kids hang out. Here are some actual Morse code conversations. And so everything you hear is happening right now. Like none of this is pre-recorded. These are people talking to one another using this kind of tech. in on these people's conversations. So as part of the reveal tonight, or I don't know what that even means, you're all going to have to behold this ungodly program, which is very powerful and super useful, but radio operator software is not known for its usability. So if you're a graphic designer or design UIs in any way, you might want to look away. So this is a program called Multi-PSK. Now, so this is, you know, I can kind of understand some of this, but let's get into the RXTX, which means receiving transmitting screen. Let's take a look at this. Here's all the different ways in which you can communicate on radios. I'm going to go in and go to uh, CW, which stands for Continuous Wave, which is the sort of technology that you use to communicate in Morse code. So radio operators will very often correct you when you're like, oh, where's the Morse frequencies? They'll correct you and say, no, it's CW, it's continuous wave, because the reason that Morse code was developed is because it's a way to communicate just by cutting off a signal and turning it on and off. And depending on the lengths in which you leave it on and when you cut it off, that will determine what each of the letters is. So it's fundamentally an audio-based way of speaking, and they're really traditional about all of this. So like when I was, I'm a part of a radio operator group like an amateur radio operator, and I brought in some like ARG Morse code stuff once, and they were disgusted. They're like, no, Morse code is never meant to be written down. Not something that you just type out dots and dashes for. They're very upset with me trying to, you know, use Morse code for something other than the way it was designed for originally. Uh, and something I want to show real quick is that my microphone is going to be picked up by all of these programs. So let's take a look at um, see what my voice looks like. Also, ignore all the text that's up here. So if I cut off all sound, notice it goes completely black. I'll turn off my ambient noise. Uh, so now we're just looking at the frequencies of the human voice. Human voices are made up of many different frequencies. If I go, okay to show you that this, it's reacting to frequency. Anyway, I'm not going to use this particular program. Um, I like this. I like that sort of sense that tonight we decided to sit down and watch Mono go through radio broadcast, but someone else is out there sitting down to broadcast. That is the thrill of this, is these are all people talking right now in real time. Okay, let's eavesdrop. Where is a good... So that sounds like... Okay, 
Okay, this is a good one. It's a good BPM. Talk to us, come on. Come on. It's not totally correct, but it looks like we have a call sign. Um, is not accurate. I need a more clear signal. It's crazy activity over here. It's okay, let's, this sounds better. frustrating part when you're trying to eavesdrop there's so many different people on different frequencies like who do we listen to and they always stop as soon as you start tuning in Pakatomi, welcome. Thank you. Is there any meaning behind the different pitches being used, or is it just meant to differentiate between senders? Um, here, I'll explain that. Um, so there's designated that the lower end of the amateur radio band, so a band is a, a range of frequencies, so all of this that you see here are activity of people communicating in Morse code using continuous wave. Um, so they all tune into a similar frequencies, but if someone decides to communicate to one person, they'll tune into the same frequency. So very common conventions, um, like if I had an antenna hitched up to this, I could theoretically talk to everybody here. Also, most of this down here is incorrect, but... Um, most of the conventions will go like this. They'll say CQ, CQ. That means I'm calling out, I'm looking for somebody to talk to. Say so CQ, CQ, DE, and then there'll be their call sign, which is usually something like, you know, A, 8, Q, or W, T, T, or something. <clears throat> so that means, um, hello, anyone out there? This is this call sign, which when you get an amateur radio license, you get your call sign, and that's like your name on the radio waves. And that's a standardized thing like across the world. Countries have different ways of doing it, but a US uh, uses a similar format like this. And then when someone wants to respond, they'll say, um, well, so they'll end with using K. That's like, you know, I'm going to stop broadcasting. I'm waiting for you to respond. And then someone will come back and say, Hey, A8W88, oops, A8WTT. So the person that was calling out will be like, Oh, I recognize that call sign. That's me. And then they'll say, A8WTT, this is uh, B6, 
W A S. Um, and then they'll usually the conversations generally consist of stuff like, "How is my signal? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay." And then there's like a rating scale about the strength of the signal. And then they'll ask about like, what kind of equipment do you have? I have this antenna. What do you have? Like, how's the weather over there? So generally, you know, this isn't an ARG. This is just actual people having like mundane conversations. And then they'll start like talking about their kids or their family. Um, and they have something called contests, which is across all amateur bands of different ways of communicating where they have a period of time where you have to make confirmed contacts between other operators, as many as you can possibly get within a short period of time. And to confirm a contact, you, you know, CQ, you seek out and get someone and they're like, hello, I've contacted you, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll make like one exchange. They'll be like, all right, we're good. And that's a confirmed contact. They write it down. And then whoever, and there's like bonus points for what they call DX, DX stands for like long range connections so if a, like someone from japan who has a powerful antenna comes in and is like hey people in europe and america um how are you doing everyone like pounces on that person because if you have a super long range connection they're like a high value point system for a contest um so everyone wants to talk to the japanese guy so they can get a lot of extra points and then, you know, like amateur radio operators, like they cover their walls and the, the call signs of all the people they've been in contact with. And they have things called like call cards, where like when you have a radio operator, or when you have your license, like people make up these little um, cards that represent their station and they physically mail them to each other and you collect them. Okay, anyway, before I move on to a different mode, I gotta successfully decode some of these conversations. You can listen to everybody at the same time. Trying to tune into just one in particular. technique to this. Uh, let me... Uh, this guy over here looks like they're having a jolly time. That's correct. Getting something here.
Okay, we're getting some of a message. Um, the reason why I'm having a hard time getting a lot of these is that an experienced operator would be able to listen to the rate that a signal is being broadcast, and they would know how many words per minute are being, like the rate that it's going at. And right now, my program is trying to predict it, and it keeps jumping around, so I, and you keep seeing the letter E over and over again in awkward spacing, because E is one dot in Morse code. So E's and T's are very often misinterpreted. Right now it thinks this is about 13 words per minute. So if you were really good at this, uh, you would just be able to be like, oh, okay, I know what this is. Let's go to fixed speed. Let's put it to this rate. Or they just know it by ear, and it wouldn't need a program like this at all. Okay, identities are revealed. Wait, wait. Now, when you register as um, as a radio operator, your your registration is publicly visible. If I put this person's call sign into here, we get this information. We know that the person, those beeps we were just listening to is K6RWM and he is American and celebrating 57 years as a ham operator 1962 to 2019 I was first licensed as W and so here's like their life story Ingo Joe who's a globe scout talks about all the technology that he uses he worked in Los Angeles for a while he uses HF radio which is a lot higher than short uh, shortwave. It's like citizen band radio gets up into that area. But here's a picture of his radio equipment. So right now, those beeps you hear are coming from like one of these Morse code keys. Um, this is a more traditional one, like kinds that were used in um, like in World War Two, World War One, and it's one where you. When you flex your wrist downward, it makes like a single beep, and that's like what you'd normally see. But this is a, uh, a what do they call it, like a side paddle. Now this, if you push it to the left, um, the hardware will continuously beep a, a dit or a dot over and over again at a consistent rate. So if you held it down to the left, it would just go like, and then if you put it to the right, it keeps doing dashes. It would go di 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 di. So you jump back and forth between left and right with your fingers, and you can communicate or transmit very fast. Because I'm a nerd that memorizes this stuff, that the um, it's really pretty musical. The division between dots and dashes is three dots per dash. So if I were to say, um, like, night sides and chat, like your name in Morse code would be like, but then if you have a side paddle, it could be extremely fast, or like only a well-trained ear could hear it, or software would do it. So here's this person's dogs, wounded warrior, here's things that are important to them. EXers, that's what I was talking about with uh, super long range. Um, Yesu is a very common manufacturer of radio. Oh my god, this guy. Here's all the connections this person has. Oh no, 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 okay. These are how many people from other parts of the world have visited this page that I'm looking at right now. 
This guy has had 4,855 Americans look at this page. 371 Japanese. These are all the different countries. And the thing with, like, uh, radio operators are very keen on keeping track of what the sun is doing. Um, here, let me lower this volume a little bit. Um, because solar activity affects the ionosphere, and when solar flares happen, it can severely cut off radio communication because of how it affects like the electromagnetic field of the Earth. So there's this like widget thing that a lot of operators have that talks about the different like uh, like output that the sun has in uh, different broadcasting bands. They call it different ranges of frequencies are affected. So like right now, 17 meters or 15 meters, there's poor transmission in day and night. So 80 to 40 meters, that, that range of frequencies are ideal right now, based on what the sun is doing. This is a lot more information than most people have. Wait, is this the guy? Bob Mueller? Oh, no, no. Uh, well, this person apparently died, so I, I assume we're not listening to a ghost. What are we? Oh yeah, so here's all of his equipment, and you can see the transceiver here. Transceiver is a a um, transmitter and receiver in one device. It looks like a high frequency, like CB radio down here. This is like something more in your immediate area that you'd communicate with. There's all kinds of other stuff that I don't fully understand about, like the power of your antenna. And here's his monitor. Most operators have computers hitched up to their stations these days. Okay, now the other person that they were talking to, WA1 EQY, that kind of looks like a typo to me, but let's see if this is a real person. And it was. Uh oh. Oh no, it's an ad, okay. This person doesn't have an extensive profile like this other person, but it's another confirmed American. <laughs> Message from the underworld, yes. Okay, let's see if it... Oh, here's a really strong signal. Okay, let's see if I can eavesdrop. So the reason you hear different pitches is because as you tune your radio, the pitches make different sounds, or they, they pitch up and down depending on how far away you are. So the, the really low pitches are down here, and the high pitches are up here, and it will change depending on how I tune the radio. So they're not actually broadcasting in a low pitch, that's just part of like the physics of signal. This is mostly my me not knowing how to use the software properly. If I recorded all of this in Audacity and looked at the waveform myself, I could probably decode these. Oh, here's a new person. W4QN. Let's see who this is. Here's, uh, here's W4QN, as you notice, lots of old people, because they've been doing it since it was a thing. 
They always have just huge amounts of expensive equipment. He's been licensed since 1952. Here's what his antenna looks like. Why do people do it? It's just a hobby at this point. I mean, it theoretically can be used as a serious form of communication. But it's just, you know, cell phones and things like that that are so much faster and more lighter weight, it's just tur mostly turned into a hobby. Okay, so... That I've spent a lot of time um, with all of these, the Morse code folks. Talking about weather. It sounds like this person is using their actual um, his hand uh, hand keying all of this. Other people use computers to just rapidly throw out really fast. Those, those ones are like like that's computer generated. Like a person most likely is not that fast. But this person sounds like they're actually doing it like hardcore like by hand. But he's going so slow that my software is kind of putting incorrect spacing. I can also tell this person is new to this because uh, they use the error code which is when you just go way out of rhythm and just go and just put lots of rapid notes in or dots in a row that means oops oops I'm sorry I made an error and then you repeat the part that you that was erroneous and something about that it's cloudy rainy uh all these numbers usually have to do with like signal strength and things like that uh, DIP is most likely talking about a dipole which is a type of antenna a lot of this is not very clear. Okay, anyway, I keep saying I'll move on, but um Now get into more complicated modes. Let's see if I can find some. These are called digital modes, and this is where ear destruction becomes a lot higher because these are not intended to be listened to by human ears. It's meant to be a computer that listens to this. This is something called um, PSK. Stands for frequency or uh, phase shift keying. Let's see if I can decode one of these here. Do PSK ten? I think this is. Come on. Always it's not right. I have a harder time decoding these. Um just to so that we can get actual results, um 
I'll bring up a sample of it on YouTube. Ah! Uh... PSK sample. All right, BPSK is a binary phase shift keen. So uh, the way that PSK works is that uh, if it's FSK, which is what all this is based on frequency shift keen, it uses two different frequencies of sound that jump back and forth in a certain um, configuration of like ones and zeros essentially is one letter. So when it comes out, it goes like and so different combinations of jumping between those two frequencies equates to a letter or a number. That's why it sounds like is because it's it's jumping all over the place uh, in different frequencies and certain combinations of those jumps is like binary code for a letter. So um, binary phase shift keen is now using the phase of an audio signal and it's using two at the same time I believe so I'm gonna tune my decoder here to BPSK 31 and the 31 is something called the baud rate which is like the distance between um, bits of information and that's critical to properly decoding and usually why it goes wrong is because you don't have the correct baud rate so BPSK 31 And here we go. The digital modulation scheme that conveys data by changing or modulating the phase of a reference signal, the carrier wave. Okay, now use BPSK uh, 125. I don't know if I can, okay, yeah, 125. Now this is gonna be way more information at a, at, a, uh, at the same rate, but it's gonna be delivering more data at once. Let me move back. Look at how fast this is. All the data, or the information of, look at that, that entire thing was just communicated in seconds. So now we'll do QPSK, which is, um, I can't remember what the Q stands for. I think it's like quad. We're using four simultaneous frequencies um qpsk 125 qpsk 125 is a bunch of garbage Just take my word for it, the rest of these. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna catch up on what you guys are saying. You know, it'd be cool, a radio play broadcast over shortwave radio, like a play-by-play -play of events. Actually, there's a guy that releases stories that are communicated in various uh, modes Um, where is one? Digital mode story. Where, where is... Okay, so this is communicated in PSK31. PSK31, let's go... I hope it's okay that it's BPSK. Um. Okay, 
Okay. Come on. Enough with the noise. Give me the right kind of noise. Okay. I know it's hard on your ears, but that sound you're hearing is communicating the text on here. So this is an entire 30 minutes of this, and it's like a, a story. I'll turn it down a bit so it's not quite as bad on your ears. Should still be loud enough for this to understand. Hello and welcome to another Strange Beacons digital mode story. Today's topic, of course this is like excruciatingly slow, so I don't recommend actually sitting here for 30 minutes, but it, this is fun for people you know, who have equipment to do this stuff. Topic today is Kenneth. What is frequency? Story written using multiple sources. Links available in show notes. Okay, we're not going to listen to that noise the whole time here. Um, yeah, this is the same type of technology that uh, modems for the internet use, like 56k modems and things like that. Um, but there are so many different ways to communicate using this kind of tech. Like, look, take a look at this menu. This isn't even all of them, but here's all the different ways that you can use uh, radio waves to deliver a message. You got like PSK of all these different BODs. There's chip 64, there's CW, then there's coherent CW. I don't know what 90% of these are. Rob, MFSK16, Autex, Mill, STD, HF, there's Olivia, regular voice, there's Thor, Domino, F, R, T, T, Y, that's very common, Riddy, Radio Teletype, Hellschreiber, the name of one, Fax Machines, I know something that would be fun. Everybody knows SSTV, right? Most people that don't know anything about radio usually know about SSTV because it's very common in ARGs. And I first heard of it because of the Portal, Portal 2 ARG. Okay. So this is what introduced me to the fact that all this tech exists was when the ARG appeared in Portal 1 and it was to advertise Portal 2 before it was ever officially announced. So they, one day they just made an update and there's a whole wiki about this ARG and there's no way I could cover everything in it. All the radios suddenly started delivering messages. So... You know, I'll pretend like I'm there on the scene right now. Ah! Decoding this for the first time. Like, that sounds like Morse code. Even though I would just do it by hand. But here's, I'll let the computer do it. Skip all that. Transmission active external uh, Mata line active message digest active. Looks like, it looks like I didn't... Oh, active. I didn't fully get it. Now... Here's SSTV. It's a way that you can create an image out of sound. And it's a really complicated signal. And this mode is what was used to get photos of the moon landing back to Earth. And I believe that's why it was first developed was so that um, you could use a really low amount of power to send an audio signal um, and you could get an image out of it. 
because the amount of data to send that is a lot less than if they tried to like do anything else. So it was just made to be like a, a low power kind of thing to go from the moon back to the Earth. But uh, the Portal ARG used this as well. So here we go. This was put into the game. Should be set up right. So if you look right here. Oh shoot. I only caught the end. Oh, the person cut off the video. Um, so this is what it's supposed to look like. And this ARG led into using the BBS, which is a bulletin board system, which is like a thing where you plug your computer into your phone line. This is like internet communities before the internet and you would use your telephone landline to, with your computer to connect to other computers. And they set up a BBS for the ARG and people actually had to like get the tech in order to, to use this. So there's lots of more SSTV signals or, yeah, that were made and they're, they're purposely designed to be really fuzzy looking. Um, thing that's kind of interesting though and then it goes into the rest of the ARG. Is that, um... It's super creepy the way that radio operators design their SSTV call cards. And they're not trying to be creepy. But us as outsiders who are not a part of their community look at them and are like, this is... Okay, so these are put together uh, and, and they're broadcast through just, you know, through the means that we just heard. So there's a lot of Comic Sans that happens. And this is like their signature, radio operator signature. And because of the, the nature of analog signals and things like that, is that there's going to be a lot of noise and sometimes there's slant. And there's uh, where it gets skewed looking and there's... Um, transposition or something like that where stuff is just out of alignment goes too far to one side or another but they design all these little cards but when they start getting creepy it's like they'll just throw in some kind of like pop culture and it still goes along like there's family guy ones <laughs> And it's a lot of times like a picture of their equipment. God, I, I kept a few that were creepier than others. A lot of them are just kind of like ugly <laughs> MS Paint art. There's ones that look like this. Like, see this, this is getting a little creepy, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, this is creepy. It's uh, a kangaroo looking into a guy's pants. Creepy in the wrong way, though. <laughs> Look at this one. Yes, okay, now we're getting into the creep zone. What's funny though, is that because this is all sound, you can just totally mess up the signal just by making noises. And it's almost like a form of art in itself. Um, oh, we had this guy on here still. 
Um, so, for example, I'll go back. Get a non portal example. I think this is robot. Or no, there's different names. Okay, there's Scotty1 is a name of a type of signal. So I gotta turn this to Scotty1. That the synchronize, the signal sends something out that's called like a preamble, which means that it will um gives a little bit of data right at the beginning when you hear lilililili. And then it goes li 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 li. that little do li 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 is giving out critical information to the decoder saying like I'm about to broadcast in this mode with all of these settings get ready here it comes and then here's the signal and then li 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 li, and then all the rest of the data comes through so I'll decode part of this one to keep reading the chat um University of Alaska looks like the 90s spectrogram end of it is scariest comic sans is the scariest of all the creep zone uh, I've been using this for horror photos. You can glitch images with this. Uh, if you want my nudes, you're going to have to go through decoder software. Um, but here's what it's supposed to look like. Oh god, sorry, that's really irritating, isn't it? My software automatically is correcting for uh, the skewing that's happening. Um, not going to do the whole thing, but just to show you that this is all audio. we can mess with the way it looks by making sound. So what's something that won't get me muted that's annoying? Um, how about... Um, okay, it's so the most annoying thing I could think of offhand. So if I play some... Uh, some random audio from the internet over the signal. And then I put the signal through. stop it. Notice how clean it gets all of a sudden. I don't know if you can see it. Oh god, that's annoying, isn't it? So you can see that it's really crusty looking up here, and then as soon as I turned it off, it started getting clean again. So now my own voice going through right now is messing with the signal. I can be like... Da -da 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 -da. And then it got clean again. But the technology is surprisingly robust that it, it despite all the noise, it can still give a, a pretty clear image. <laughs> Digital meat. But like, we could make our own SSTV signal too. Here, let me... Um... What if you play the code at twice the speed? That's a good question. See, this... There's a lot that could be done here. Um, yeah, I won't do this for too much longer, but yeah, record the beginning of this.
I'll take just that signal. What is that noise? Oh, is that vine sauce alerts? Oh, that's dire boar going live. Okay. Um. Okay. So this is how it's supposed to sound, but what if I change the speed? Make it go a lot faster. I'm guessing this won't even register with the software, but let's see what happens. Yeah, it's not even in the right range. Yeah, it caught it. Uh, what about if I just change the pitch really slightly? Um, percent change, just do like negative one. Wait, wait, wait. Do negative ten. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Eh. Okay. Oh, it got some of it. Look at how messed up it is. And it thinks it should still be listening for more. Okay. Oh, you can change it in the... Oh. Good thing I was reading chat closely. Uh... It's not even going to receive it, right? Oh, and then now it, it keeps it. Well, anyway, just the point I'm trying to make is that it's sound that produces an image. Um, I know something we should do. Um, because I, I would like to see some of Vinny's Sunday stream whenever that starts. But I might go a little bit into... Um, into his stream because this is really fun um, some of you may have heard of something called number stations and there's a very amazing website called Priom which is the Russian word let me prove it tonight is a night of me proving that I only know a couple words in Russian and I'm too proud of it uh if we go to Ruski and we type Hey Keyboard, hello There you go To um Pri Priom Reception So it's like Radio Reception is what the website's named after now this website keeps track of number stations and all of their records and so we could listen to a number station in real time. Problem is, is that they're probably going to be pretty far off so I should get this going, leave this timer going. Okay, so 
this station, which it will automatically open up an SDR, and it will tune me into where it should happen. Well, this one runs way faster. Okay. So I'll leave this going, and so 22 minutes, 22 minutes from now is like, um, for me it'd be like 11.02. So if we don't manage to catch this number station in real time, they do have recordings Oops, as records. So if this website has all kinds of designations for all of these. So it, it's uh, S06. So let's go to the number station's archive. S stands for it's Slavic. And it's uh, numbered as 06. So let's go to Slavic 06. It is the... Wait, 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 wait. S06. Is it 06A? Uh, literally the first one? Oh, okay, that one. It's Russian man, or Russian man. So here's what we can expect. Well, thank you, Rogue. Um, this one contains a voice, and it is still active, and its name is Russian Man. And it's going to have, and it's been going on since, or at least it's been tracked since 2011. And it seems that it originated in Moscow, Russia. So it's gonna begin with its preamble. So it has three digits schedule ID, three digit group, and then it will have five digit paired groups. This is extremely common in number stations that have groups of five. So it's going to be a lot of numbers, as you might imagine, um, in a number station. Uh, so just to explain a little bit about what a number station is, is that uh, their existence is very unknown, <laughs> so right off the bat know that anything that we say about them could be incorrect. Um, but what what everyone has gathered, the like non like the general public has gathered, is that they are little unofficial radio stations that sometimes originate from military bases, sometimes they're just out in unknown places like put into universities or like out in the mountains somewhere or in the woods or just really like no one completely knows where most of them are located and they emit at they emit a signal at a very specific time on a regular schedule and sometimes they come and go but some have been around since like uh, World War II and they deliver they tend to deliver lots of numbers and the way that in which they do that sometimes has a person, actual live person sitting down and just reading numbers. But in, as technology developed, they had speech synthesis. So it started to become a thing where someone would just sit, or they would program a system to use a speech, uh, text -to speech kind of thing to read the numbers to be like, five, nine, three, three, seven, five, nine, three, two, zero, five, three, two over and over again or sometimes they would use um, Morse code or other digital modes like we were talking about with like PSK and things like that or sometimes they'd be delivered uh, in a custom mode that cannot be interpreted by the average system so like an example that I can use to show a real-time decoding is from this guy's channel this is a really good channel if you're interested in obscure things uh, related to radio frequencies. Is Kurt Rowlett. 
see if I can find... Okay. So while we're waiting to for our real-time number station decoding... Um, here's an example of one being decoded. Uh, how am I going to do this? Hello, ruined. So here's a real world Russian number station. It's called XPA2 and it uses polytone, which is a similar thing to FSK. What I was talking about frequency shift keen, where it's a sequence of two different frequencies that designate like a binary pattern that equates to a number or something of some kind. So he's using software here called Rivet, not related to the architecture software to decode the sound and get numbers out of it. So this is a number station in its purest form. XPA2. So this is what's called the preamble. It's just trying to get the attention of whoever may want to listen in on the station. So right now it's just saying, Hello world, I'm about to deliver information. When you hear this sound, it means you've tuned into the correct thing. So if you're a secret uh, Russian spy hiding in America and you've tuned into this signal, you know that you're in the right spot and it'll do this for like five to 10 minutes. So let's jump into where the actual body of the station is delivered. All right, here we go. So here's the data, and it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but this decoding program, all of the information is going to appear up here in the top left corner. So you get the idea. It's going to go on. Look at all the information, though. So I have this software that he's using. I could use it, but it's easier just to like look in uh, at someone else doing it. Um, so an important thing, so the question that will usually uh, come up over and over again is, you know, who are these stations for? And that's the big mystery. The thing about analog radio is that you have no idea who's listening to you, but you could have a pretty good idea of who's broadcasting or where. At least in theory, you could, if a station is regular enough or has a strong enough signal, you could in theory figure out where they are. It's why, that's why a lot of the archives of and Priom will say the location is because like they've been consistent enough that people can just say, hey, I live in Netherlands and I hear the signal really strong. Or like, hey, I'm from Texas and the signal's really weak. So just through lots of reports of signal strength, people can eventually figure out where a station originates. But you cannot figure out who's listening. And as the whole basis of number stations is that you could have someone hiding in the country with a really cheap little shortwave radio listening in and they could go undetected. They could be getting information from their homeland and you wouldn't know when, where, how. Um, and one common usage of all the numbers is something called a one-time pad, which is a form of encryption that uses random number generation uh, in order to encrypt it. And it has to be true random number generation, um, which there's like special software that you like actually purchase truly randomized numbers. And that is an actual like 
industry. You can't just like go, you know, randomnumber.com and type it in because every time random numbers are generated in cheaper systems like on a computer, it's usually based on like the clock cycle of a, of a CPU or something like that, which is predictable and could be cracked. If you're talking about like military grade secrecy using, um, using that uh, one time pad encryption has to be truly random. But anyway, so you have like the original message and then you have what, and then you have the random numbers and then you have what it encrypts into. So uh, I wish I had a better like visual aid for this, but it's like, so you convert all of the, the letters of your message into, I might be getting this wrong, but into the letters that they, or the numbers that they occur in the alphabet. So like A is one, B is two, C is three. And then you, you, so what is it? you, um, specific mathematic operation. It's like you subtract, I think, the number of the original message with the random number, and then you put the numbers back into, back into n numbers or something like that. It's really confusing. But anyway, it's just, it's like uncrackable, mostly. The only way that you could figure out what a one-time pad is, is if you had that set of random numbers. And the reason it's called a one-time pad is because, um, uh, it's because they were handed tiny little pads of paper that contained the random numbers, and they look like this. So here is the one-time pad. So during like the Cold War and stuff, secret agents would carry these around, and by hand, they would listen into a number station, they would record all the numbers being given to them, they would do the mathematical operation to use these numbers and the numbers they received in order to get the decrypted message. And then this paper was often made out of flammable material that they would then light this on fire to get rid of all evidence. Because if this piece of information is compromised, or if it is stolen, the whole message is compromised. So that's one of the big flaws of a one-time pad, is that it relies on physically transferring a piece of paper to an agent. So that is the big problem is like, how do you get this into the hand of someone? And a lot of times like the paper is made to dissolve quickly in water or it's edible. That if they're about to be caught by the police, they could just like chew this thing and consume it. <laughs> um, and of course, all kinds of different ways of obscuring or of hiding these little pads throughout history like people have hidden them inside their bodies through various orifices um <clears throat> so i'm catching up on what was it? that's a really good impression of tts make sure that i'm not a robot sometimes question if i'm a robot what's up felt some signals and things. Yes, Mad Bagel, there are all kinds of signals happening here. And hello, by the way. Made it into synth or guitar sampler. I'm sure people have made music out of these types of signals. Is there like a company that uses lava lamps to produce random? Probably. Um, Tom Scott did a great video on it, like random number generation. The number station we're waiting on is going to broadcast in eight minutes. So what are some other things I can do while... Let's, let's browse for some voices. Okay, now this is... Okay, put this all the way over here. This is where the number station is going to happen. Now this is where we left off last time. Let's listen to some old dads talk about their radio equipment. It's actually getting pretty late. I don't know if they're going to be up. Okay, here's more 
um, FSK. Here's Polytone. This is all conversations that are happening, and they sound like this. I technically can decode those, but it's a little trickier to do. I'm trying to look for some actual voices. Here's a voice. All right, here we go. Let's see what really interesting things are talking about. Oh, it's music. Is this a pirate radio? Okay. We can find a voice. Whoa, this look what is this? Okay, this might be loud. What on earth? Oh, here we go. Wait, I think this is LSB. Looks like LSB. Yeah, it is. And this is these are people talking in real time right now. That is the idea. Yep. So what did you end up having for lunch? <laughs> there you go. Uh, some shrimp. Oh, that's good. Yeah. They're gonna bring it in a couple of days. Uh, they called me again yesterday. They told me about the cost and everything, and uh, they said it's gonna take a couple of days. I said, okay, no problem. So, no, no haven tonight? No haven. Yeah, I got all kinds of weird noises here. Weird. Well, I hear one the man made noise. That awkward silence. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's it's just mainly on forty meters, dude. That's what's weird. You know, I only hear the noise, uh this man made local noise, uh during week times. I don't hear it on the weekends. I wonder why that is. Have you heard of Geraldine Fenderson? No, I haven't heard of him. Something. Yeah, but it's daylight now, so the light should be off, shouldn't it? Well, they just woke up. Do they know I'm listening in? No, they don't. Well, they're lost too, like safe. I forgot. They have no way of knowing that I'm listening to them. Uh, he said, uh, he never been to your house. Uh, maybe the one you, who you got lost. Sounds like he might be talking to somebody yeah, in he India. He must have been lost when he was there and can't remember. Yeah, okay. Well, he said, no, I never been to his house. X-ray Echo 1. X-ray Echo 1? X-ray Echo 1? X-ray Echo 1, Uniform Yankee Sierra. Good morning to you from Kuwait. Uh, Kuwait. Uh, Alejandro, uh, nice to meet you. First time on this path, five and nine. Uh, I missed his call sign. It was an X-ray echoes. I couldn't. Uh, five kilo, uh, one gold Sierra. The X-ray Alexander. Uh, thank you. 
Very good, Alejandro. Uh, my name is Abdullah I'm in Kuwait. Uh, X-ray Echo 1, uniform Yankee Sierra. I, I, I don't know it fast enough. Thank you, 73. Thank you, 73. Bye-bye. I mean, Bye -bye. Abu Benji, go ahead. people who use this know that anyone can be listening, so they're not going to, like, oh, yeah, reveal right personal details. That's part of the thrill, too, is that uh, your Angel. voice can be heard by anyone. If you can find some other people. Oh, yeah, you're doing good, but you were stronger earlier. I mean, it's um, uh, an hour after sunrise now. Kind of a weak signal. Man, I can hear you much better now, Chris. Where are you located? X-ray zero one YS maybe. Oh God. Okay, that signal. I'm not able to hear the receiving end very well. Here's another one. Oh. Oh. stayed there for 17 years and went down into the basement of my grandparents' house. I didn't tell them nothing about it. Finally, 17 years later, no, that wasn't the right. been uh, <laughs> just got the wire and uh, uh, wondering what, what it was. The grandparents didn't have a clue. And so, uh, I thought that was kind of funny, but it stayed up that long, uh, which was amazing. Uh, uh, and then, uh, and then I heard them all talking about Collins Radio, and I knew this uh, uh, CB or but he was uh, really he was more into collecting radios, not um, and not really. Oh, talking. King Ky, thank you for the host. What did I just come into? <laughs> well, Ky, let me tell you. We are listening to shortwave radio right now. We're listening to analog antennas broadcasting around the world, and we're eavesdropping in on some conversations that old dads are having with each other, talking about like what they're having for lunch. Um, this is a, based on an antenna that's in New York on Long Island, and uh, I'm not totally sure who's talking in this conversation, but... And uh, I had a big uh, AM, FM... Uh... Uh, show wave, uh, any, any radio I could find. This is all uh, real time. Show wave, uh, I would buy. And then I had one radio that was messed up, and it was th it was throwing out carriers. And by accident, I was listening to a sideband signal, and that carrier was across the sideband signal. Hey, Basiliku, thank you. Assassin Rain, hello, Skelecorgi. But you know what? Or something like that. Just because, um, because I can, let's mess with the signal a little bit. I mean, this will only be from our end. They don't know that we're listening to them. But they broadcast knowing that anyone could possibly eavesdrop. Um, yeah, these are amateur radio operators. Everything else, uh, I ended up talking to the, um, the same guys that I listened to uh, for those years. And uh, I still, uh, I still talk to some of them, uh, even today, but I don't, um, uh, well, uh, personally, not to no more on AM radio, and you know, I gave that up, so. Anyhow, yeah, I just had to tell you, I couldn't believe the, uh, the story was almost identical, so. I felt a good name to, uh, uh, Doug, and hope to catch you again. Okay, so this signal over here looks like it's an AM signal of some kind of possibly music. You can kind of tell by looking at the frequencies. Um, I mean, I've been explaining all of this throughout the whole stream. 
Uh, so what we're looking at is what's called a waterfall, and these are the strengths of different signals at frequencies. So here's 7.1 megahertz, and this thing in the middle here is called a carrier signal, which is unique to an AM or FM signature. Um, so that means that it's probably going to be music or some kind of thing, but we're in the amateur band, so it's probably like a pirate radio station or someone's own unofficial music station. Let's see. And there's always a warning with these streams that it could possibly be really loud, so get ready. Oh, it's really weak signal. I don't think it's strong enough. Oh, we're missing the number station. Uh, oh, it's broadcasting. Yes, this is an actual number station broadcasting right now. It's Russian. I can kind of understand it. Chitiri, Chitiri, Chase, Chase. Oops. So this is a an old speech synthesizer that's broadcasting out of Moscow, Russia right now. And it's delivering the body of the number station right now. So this is where all the actual encoded one-time pad information is. And according to the guide, this is the record of the station, is it delivers stuff in groups of five. So we're right now we're in the body of it. Thank you, KY. Number stations scare me a bit. They should. Um, well, thanks for the follows, by the way. Oh, yeah, Agent Red Jackal, I missed your follow earlier. Thank you. And also, Liz is a noob who is from the Blackout Club community. Thank you. And uh, Roused Hour and Nopsvet. Um, so there's a website called the Conet Project. I don't know if it's Kone, but it's a SoundCloud that is better than your SoundCloud, you know, you as in general audience, that has records of number stations. Um, There is, let's see if I can bring up some classics, classic hits. Uh, can I search within? Actually, it'd be easier for me to just go ignore this. Um, Lincolnshire Poacher. I was using this to like interfere with uh, SSTV signals earlier. Oh my god, Google, please. No, 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 no. Um, so this follows a very similar formula to what we were just listening to. Uh, like when I, this website, priom.com or .org. Wait, is our number station friend still going? Yeah, they are. Uh... This kind of structure with a preamble where they have like a 
a lot of preambles these days tend to just be pretty dry, that they're just like a tone that keeps playing or something. But back in the day, back before I was born, and this is where they get a lot of their creepy vibes from, they used to play music in an attempt to sort of disguise themselves among other frequencies so that whatever secret agent or whoever the intended audience is would know what song to listen to. And that was a part of their preamble. And the Lincolnshire Poacher, a lot of people who grew up in the UK in like the 60s and 70s, would this would be playing at a specific schedule at a certain time of day, a certain day of the week, and it became a part of their upbringing, and no one ever fully figured out what the message was that was being sent or anything, but they knew that it was creepy, and that was what uh, all that was uh, of matter to the general public. Thanks for the follow, Fake Theory. Hi, Rai. <laughs> And this goes on for a while. I'm going to skip ahead. Three, nine, seven, one, five. This is real. This isn't Three, an ARG or anything. Nine, this is seven, one, broadcasted five. for actual practical Three, purposes. Nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Um, so some of the theories about like why, you know, three, nine, seven, one, five, that that part in the beginning is often used as like an identifier or what sort of agent should be like, okay, there's a lot of things it could be. I have to keep stressing that it has never been fully decoded or known what parties are involved or anything. Theory is, is that in the beginning, that designation is is telling the agent, a specific agent, like let's say there's five Russian agents in the US and they tune into this, actually it would have been Europe at the time, Russian agent in the UK, there's five of them. And then they all tune in at the specific time of day, specific day of the week, they're sitting in front of their shortwave radios, they got a number pad out and they hear, okay, Lincolnshire Poacher, it's a song, it's recognized by a lot of British people, Three nine seven one five. So then four of the five agents could be like, oh, it's not a message for me. So then the one who knows that that number means that they are the one that should keep listening. They're like, all right, I'll keep listening. Three, nine, seven, one, five. And sometimes that information might also reference a code book of some kind. Um, like sometimes agents would have these giant... Uh, booklets of different messages that are all the possibilities of things that could be delivered. Um, like it could say, you know, we need you to return home immediately. Or it could be, you need to stay in the country for one more month or in the country for five more months or lots of all the possible things that an agent could be told would be in this book. And like 39715 could contain info saying what page, what line, what column, row, or whatever they need to pay attention to. Three, nine, seven. Now we have different tones that are coming up here, and this could also designate something else. This will keep going. Two, two, three, nine, seven. When you get to the end. That's designating that, hey, the message is now over. And it sh I think this one does it, but uh, six zeros in a row is often a sign in a lot of different radio communications to say, hey, um, I'm about to cut off my, uh, my antenna. And I think this one ends that way. 
Oh, okay. Or it just ends in the intro song. And it just keeps doing that. Um, and before a lot of uh, people arrived with KY's host, I was talking about one time pad. So one time, like all the numbers in the middle, the ones that were not consistent, is a form of encryption. It's called a one-time pad, and they involve groups of five numbers, and it, it, it relies on um, random number generation. So agents that were going to be brought out into the country, whatever country they're going to like hang out in for a while, were given these pads, and they're often extremely small and made of like flammable paper or paper that dissolves in water, something that where they could discard it very quickly if they're about to be caught because these are just a series of random numbers and this randomized number uh, pad is used to decrypt the messages from the number station. So they compare the random numbers with their message and they do this mathematical operation, I always forget what it's called, in order to produce the decrypted number sequence and then those numbers equate to the numbers of the alphabet, and then that is the message. So if they don't have a code book that has pre-made messages, modulus, yes, yes, that is the operation. Mod. Um, then the, um, so if it's not from a code book, then they're able to actually give an original message. And it was known as being a mostly uncrackable form of code. But the biggest problem with it is that you had to physically give the pad to the agent. And if someone got that pad, then your whole message is compromised. So that was a big flaw, but people eavesdropping in, like us listening to number stations, oh, it stopped broadcasting. Uh, would have no idea what it is, and even through different method methods of like brute forcing what it is, you would never be able to decrypt it. But it's just weird that they're still going on today. Um, but here's the sample of that's on the website of the one we just listened to called Russian Man. Russian Man. Two, seven, eight. Two, seven, eight. Va is two, Siem is seven, Vosim is eight. Dva, sim, Wait, Dva, yeah. Vosim, two, seven, nol, nol, zero, nol, zero, zero, nol, nol, zero. Dva, sim, Vosim. And this has been broadcasting uh, since 2011, and probably even before then. Um. And there's a famous story. Uh, what is it? Russian 7. I can find it. Wait, wait. Operator Russian 7. Um, this is known as a very key moment in number station history. Okay. Well, let's listen to it first and get an idea of what this, what these sound like. This m could be really loud. I'll try to get the volume down. Seven, three, Okay, there's that one, but there's also this one. This is the one that is involved in the story that I'm about to... Oh, Jesus. Okay. This uses polytone form of encryption. So it's using differences in tone as a method of uh, encoding numbers and stuff. Okay, that's the preamble. Here's the body.
So the story is that in... This is pretty recent. In 2011, October 18th, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, German police arrested a Russian couple when they're in their apartments in the middle of listening to a number station. And it says that... Um, uh, da, da, da. Okay, they found Hydrun Anschlag in the act of sitting at her shortwave radio receiver get to get orders from Moscow. The media give the time of the raid as 6.30 a.m. in local German time. Media sources also relate that Anschlags would communicate by radio with Moscow every Tuesday at 6 or ev always on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This apparent schedule will be the basis to match it against known number stations. Um... The time given with the raid 6.30, so it would be possible for the police to catch them in the act. Okay, furthermore, technical details indicate the radio receiver was plugged into a computer and that decoding software was used, which is consistent with a number station using a digital mode. It was also mentioned that the transmission was accompanied by a special identification tune which could be layman's way to report that the sounds made by the slow MFSK digital mode like XPA. And the really interesting thing is that this number station had been tracked for a long time, and after this incident, the arrest of these two agents, the station broadcast what they call null, which it would keep broadcasting, but it was an empty message. So right after the arrest, the number station changed. So it was just providing proof that even in 2011, number stations are still being used to communicate to secret agents that are in any country. In this case, it was Germany. It was Russian agents in Germany. And they link to the, the articles talking about it here. Um... Russian couple's arrest could mar diplomatic ties. It goes in the details of like what they think these agents were doing when they were in Germany. So it's like this isn't just a Cold War thing. This is still happening right now. Um, but anyway, let's listen to old men talk about what they had for dinner. Come on, say something. Seven kilo X-ray. Okay, Marilyn, is that number two Yankee Radio Z? Is that Roger? Okay, Nick. Uh, okay, what I got here? Is that number nine? Eagle X-ray seven kilo X-ray. That's Tommy. He is a direct QSL, and he's located in Arizona. Yeah, no man. Kilo X-ray, Sally, Kilo X-ray. Alan. Oh, Drake Kilo X-ray, Arizona. The number 10 is a YL. No number 3, Yankee Radio Z. That is Michelle, and she is located in Dallas. Yeah, number 10, YL. No number 3, Yankee Radio Z. Michelle, in Jesus Christ. What language is that man speaking? Um... Uh, because it's really hard to tell if somebody's listening to one because you're basically blasting the radio. Yeah, that's the thing, is that radio, analog radio is valuable because unlike the internet, um, you cannot track who is listening to a radio signal. Like, nobody except the, like, 40-something people watching me right now know that I'm listening to what I'm listening to. And that's, like, the basis for number stations and other things in radio is that you can send a signal to potentially millions of people, anyone with a signal, uh, and you would never know who's listening. Oh, here's a good signal. Looks like LSB. <laughs> Got to tune it in correctly.
but we can't hear the receiving end because this is all relative. Like this antenna I'm listening through is in Long Island. So notice the difference in signal strength. Whiskey Alpha, Whiskey Alpha 7 Mexico. Okay, I think I can figure out where this guy is. Here we go. This is who we're listening to right now. Um was born and raised in Arizona, became interested in am amateur radio in the 1970s. Talk about their own history here. Uh, above pictured is Hajime Konishi, and his call sign is 74, blah, blah, blah. I wish he had a higher res picture. But here's the guy in his radio equipment. Here's his antennas. So like anytime you were using amateur radios, like as I was explaining earlier, is that you have to have a license and you're on record. So when they give their call sign, you can look them up and see like all a bunch of their information here. What kind of microphones they use. Uh, they're usually really particular about the types of mics they have. There's a certain brand that's really popular. I can't remember the name. Let's see what this is. Too weak. Um, but since we have new people here, also thanks for the follow, uh, User Chiu and Controlled Chaos. Just to show that this antenna, oh, there's a lot of other conversations happening right now. That you can tell if it's voice based on like the inconsistency. So here's like an AM with the carrier signal, and then here's LSB, stands for lower sideband, which is a lower power antenna. But just to show that um, that this is just a regular antenna, not just for like random dudes. Here is the full range of everything that this antenna that's in Long Island. Let me bring up the map again. Getting too many tabs open here. We did stuff with SSTV earlier. Uh. Uh. Did I even leave, leave it open? Well, anyway, um... You know, the red shows the strength of the signal. And so you're seeing everything here. Not just radio as we know it, not just AM, FM radio or amateur uh, ham radios, but you're seeing military radar. You're seeing any kind of wavelength that is passing through the antenna that can be heard. You're seeing like military stuff, you're seeing just mundane things like um, security system in a house communicating to another device, or a uh, famous example is remote key locks on cars. That if you push a thing to unlock your doors on your car, it could potentially show up on here. It'd be a tiny little blip that nobody would notice, but if it's close enough to the antenna and strong enough, you would see it. 
like if we go way down here to the super low frequencies here, like these are professional stations. This is just like regular New York radio. So if I tune in, God dang it, forget to do this in the wrong order. Okay. Just see what, what all this is about. And it's illegal for just an average person to have a, a, a broadcasting antenna this powerful. So it definitely has to be like music or something. Of course, it goes to like a commercial break or something right when I tune in. The Lord spoke unto Moses saying, oh, it's another like preacher Israel channel. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Some of you ought to have this, but circle the word feast. Draw a line out to that wide margin if you've got a Bible like mine. And translate that word right. Literally, it means set times. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning you the know what? set times. Let's make this a little more interesting. Let's see what this signal is. Chinese radio? Oh, thank you, Spy And making you believe they're the same thing. Now the election is just the mere image of all that. Image. The election that we had in 2004 that ended in that uh -oh. last day of uh -oh. the uh -oh. ruling spell. Uh oh, uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's tune away from that. Like, what is this? What's going on here? Ooh. I think we got a air traffic control. All a real time right now. You know, those tones that you just heard are communicating to a device. So that's probably triggering a computer to do some sort of operation back at their headquarters or whatever this thing we're ever listening to. It could be like park rangers or like fire departments or I don't really know what who we're listening to right now. We're only hearing one side. At 40 West, contact Santa Maria, 5598 and 34901. Can I pick up CB signals? I think some of the antennas can. CB is super high frequency. 
Um, sometimes it's too high for one of these antennas, but I don't know. Maybe. Let's see what this is. This one talks as soon as I tune to this one, then I go back and forth. <laughs> it's New New York air traffic control, really? Oh, did you look up the uh, uh, the megahertz? That's awesome. Oh uh, yeah, I I get used to all of the. Okay, well, it's just going to be a lot of, uh, you know, utility stuff. Thank you for the follow, the Reb. Ah. Well, this is probably going to be some kind of medical equipment. Like, look at, this is a crazy signal going on here. What does this sound like? This is not going to be a voice. Come on, do it again. Yeah, there's a whole culture behind CB radios. And for people that don't know, it's citizen band radio. A lot of people who are uh, truckers or live out in rural parts of the country, there's like a whole social network surrounding CB radio. And you don't have to have a license to own one. You get a lot more people using them. People take them camping. A good survival tool. Especially if you don't have internet. Stuff always stops as soon as I tune into it. And I know they can't know that I'm listening. It's just funny how that works. Like, watch, I'll tune into this voice. Which is really quiet. Okay, this is going to be loud. Um, this looks like some kind of like QBFQPSK. Oh god, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, these all every individual group is a type of uh Here's my decoder. Different type of phase shift keying. And I doubt I'll be able to get these, but let's see. Uh, BPSK. Aye! No, this is just all garbage. Because I don't have it set up correctly. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be hard to. Whoa! Um, this looks like teletype. I should be able to decode this, or at least get whatever data it's transmitting. This is a much simpler form of encryption. This is, um,. Why did my... Let's go to RTTY45... Oh no, this is way higher. This is 200? Oh, it's even higher than that. Okay, this looks like it's probably a commercial one that's gonna be proprietary, meaning that I can't decode it. All the stuff in this program are for amateur radios. This is intended to not be received by the average person. Now this... Uh, 
I believe this is a form of radar, because it tends to look like that. Like military radar. Like these are really common across Russia. Uh, scanning the air for aircraft, missiles. What is this? You love bad puns while driving down the road. Truckers have a great language of their own. You're just starting to learn. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to keep track of the whole language. I'm gonna get into some weird anomalies. Um, This is the international time clock. Um, this is a radio station that is fully dedicated to delivering time through radio. Now, I don't know if this is still the case, but there's a lot of um, like military equipment and stuff that tunes into this station in order to get what time it is. Getting a lot of interference, as you can see on the right side here. We, we just have Satan interfering with our signal right now. Lot lizards. <laughs> Come on, do the thing. I want to hear the voice. It has a nice little, like, musical number to it. Now what's this? More FSK data. I'll go around, I'll look for some 
heard a BRB in analog radio form. I'm sorry, uh, who's calling, please? NAPAW, outside Detroit. You're coming in 5-9 here. Oh, okay, very good. What's your first name? Name's Ron. Just listen. Hello, Ron. How are you? Uh, let me turn it towards you there. Hang on a second. Uh, does that make it any uh, stronger for you there? It sure does. Okay, yeah, I uh, put the aperture open towards you, too, so uh, I wouldn't lose you. All right, very good. I just want to check my home, home frequency that I use. I'll be right back, guys. This is Kilo on America, too, Delta Delta India. We'll be right back in a few. Okay, well, see what someone else is talking about. What about these guys? Sorry about the noise. Oh god, there's some terrible... Okay, I'm gonna get away from that. Yeah, we used to do that. We'd get 20, 30 cents maybe if we were lucky. Shoot, we used to get four, five dollars a load for them things, man. We used to load them up. We had a big old wagon. We'd get four, five dollars worth of things in, in a couple hours and, and go in there and sell them and turn around and take off and do it again. So they think uh, they think recycling is a, is the new deal here. We've got these recycle bins from our borough here that we have to put all our newspaper in and glass. No, yeah, we recycled back in 1956. You can tell it's a lot of old people. <laughs> Say again? Now, if you can't run it for other reasons, that's fine. I got you anyway. Okay. Uh, I uh, have it on now. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. What a difference. K3C is me. Hey, how you doing, Jim? Hey, doing, Charlie. So, how, what, 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 did, what, I mean, how much power did you start at? And how much power did you go? At A, F, A, to I, T, Q, from Alpha, Bravo, 4, Bravo, over, over. Okay, you are into the noise level now. Like, uh, 5, 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 5. 5, 5, 5, 6, okay? The, the, the different direction coming, 5, 5, 5, 6, you got it? Roger, Roger. That's what I was hearing on you. I did that a minute ago when you were transmitting. The antenna is working very well here this evening. 73, uh, good morning. We'll look for you again from Alpha Bravo 4 Bravo in the heart of Dixie. Over. Okay, okay. Beautiful antenna. 15 dB. Okay, difference. Uh, 15 to 20 dB difference uh, between the directions, sure, okay? All the best from you and all of you, and good to hear and thank you very much for the information, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, 73. Yeah, so 7-3 uh, is like a really old tradition, traditional way of saying goodbye in radio. So you'll see that in all the different modes. You'll see it in voice. People will be like, 7-3! And also in like the CW or the Morse code conversations, you'll see 7-3. It's just common all throughout radio. Well, in there, you can put anything you want in there. You can hear a signal there. Uh, me, I mean, I blew it up. It, it does, if it, it's a fake, it's a good fake. 
it's a little screen as well. No, it's, 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 it's a screen where you're, you're supposed to put your call sign. It shows your call sign on the front of the radio. Instead of typing in his call sign, he typed in pure signal. You can put anything you want to there. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So why he didn't do that? Okay, so we're getting into the Cool Kids Club over here. Here's some uh, Morse code conversations. Let's eavesdrop. Uh, it's not not clearly picking it up. I can tell just by hearing it that a lot of these letters aren't correct. And like I was saying earlier, is what we got is name. Um, if you see lots of E's, that means that the words per minute is not accurately determined because E is one dot. This is correct. This just means from. So Ehod. Talking to Ehod and the person communicating is thigh. So I kind of have to just. Oh no, I it sounds like the conversation ended because when you hear da 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 that's CQ CQ, that means that they're trying to find someone new to talk to. Should be able to pick this one up easier. Let's see if I can get a better reading on it. Seven three. Um, this might have been the call sign. Let's see if this is actually somebody. Oh, I didn't capture it. Stop it! Oh, come on! Oh no, I didn't get it accurately. Like I was explaining earlier, um, when people are communicating with Morse code in real life, in non-ARG forms, it tends to be conversations are very straightforward, like I seen they have tons of abbreviations. Everything is abbreviated in order to like communicate faster. Like CQ is like saying, hello, are you there? And then DE, and then their call sign, like, I don't know, something like that. So they're saying, hello, who's there? This is me, and then K designates that they're done talking and they're waiting for someone else to, to communicate and then someone might respond by saying you know a83be a83be so uh, the person calling out would recognize that they heard their call sign and they would say oh that's me and the other person would be like hey a83be my call sign is n81r and then they would have all these like technical terms like here's some of the abbreviations uh, like ANT is talking about antenna GA good afternoon or go ahead GB goodbye only the station I'm working should transmit KN how copy but in general from what I've noticed is that people just talk about the weather their family, what they ate, and their equipment. Um, but someone who's really skilled with this would be able to just listen to the sound and determine exactly what rate is being communicated, like what, what words per minute, and then they would either do it by ear or they would be able to just input into software exactly what w, WPM it is, 
and then you get a more accurate reading. I just, I'm not really skilled enough to be able to pick that up. What on earth is this? Traffic control. Stevenville, Stevenville, time zero four zero zero Zulu, wind zero six zero degrees, seven knots, visibility one five miles, two zero thousand temperature minus six, two point minus one two. Montreal Mirabel, Montreal Mirabel. Oh, see you later, the Reb. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, here's the extremely low frequencies. This shouldn't be any regular people talking down here, but let's see what we can pick up. These are all like utility kinds of things. They'll just sound like noise to us. Because we're not the intended audience. Alright, well as you can see, I could sit and do this forever. It's kind of addicting. Um, I'm going to start wrapping things up. Um, as long as they're talking about number stations and things, uh, let's see. go back to Priom. So, since it's late at night in the US, that when you go to the map called the Worldwide Receiver Map, that shows people who are registered SDRs, the Software Defined Radio, which is the technology that's allowing me to access their antennas through a web browser like this. Um, so you can choose which one you want to listen in on. And the one I was using this whole stream so far it was this one in Long Island, in Hampton Bays. And there was one other person listening along with me. I wonder if they're watching the stream. So activity should be increasing quite a bit in Europe. So let's listen to, um, because I speak English, let's see if we can listen to some British radio stations. Here's a popular one. In London, we should be able to get some Russian stations from here. A 
hard to get up there and and uh it should be actually laid down and uh, uh properly fixed up it was done that's an american I doing on a british seven station. years ago and it's time for it's time for a facelift when you're eight meters tall as a gnome it's not the what thing i would imagine to find a new home for howard excuse me how's it going have you had lots of offers so far can you we've had put him in your garden of offers yes we've had offers from out of the province uh we've had uh just uh, locally here, the the neighbor has actually come up and uh, offered offered uh, to to take it onto his property. Uh, the town of Parkshole, which is about seven kilometers away, uh, that's where we originally had the amusement park was in Parkshole. Uh, Howie was never there. Um, but we moved out to Nanus, which is a little bit farther out on the main highway. And um, anyways, Parkshole has uh, offered to uh, maybe put it up in the town, so... So you're confident yeah, we're, of a new home? I think Kim Cottrell, the Sex in the City actress, is a big fan. Has she offered to take it, Howie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she hasn't offered to take it to her place, no. <laughs> Although it might be a good place. But, uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting a lot of uh, publicity here, and a lot of people have been offering uh, to, to take it and, and help with uh, re relocating it. There you go. If you're an Apple Night listener and you want Howie... Get in touch with Chris Hale. That's it from Up All Night. Okay. So I think we just got gnomed through uh, shortwave radio. Oh, I heard about that. The United Nations. Seven Britons were among the victims, including 36-year-old Joanna Tall from Devon. She'd been heading to an environmental forum in Kenya's capital. Flight recorders uh, and preserving any evidence that might be perishable, but the flight recorders would be the prime thing. The oh, everybody's talking recorder. about it. And if your horse finishes second, third, or fourth, we're naming the offer after the specialists in finishing second, third, or oh, fourth. This is a very. It's the Tottenham Hotspur. This antenna does a good job reducing the noise. Look at how much black there is. That means there's very little noise. This offer applies to all races all day long. Paddy Power, enough of the nonsense. Max free bet £10 per customer per race, valid for seven days, win a win part of each race single. A 55-year-old British Kenyan man and a polar tourism expert who had dual French-British citizenship were also killed. Oh my God! Seven Britons were among the victims, including 36. <laughs> Literally, every Devon. station is talking about this in down. London. from Addis Ababa yesterday. The Prime Minister is battling to save her Brexit deal with warning she's headed for another defeat in tomorrow's... Some of the spiritual conditions in which doubt grows and then to prescribe grows. some remedies that will help us to deal with these struggles. We began by looking together at the condition of defective memory, which is very simply when we forget... A big win over rivals Manchester United. They triumphed 2-0 to pull two points clear of United. Liverpool had a 40 victory for Burnley, while Chelsea drew... One. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's all the morning news. Monday morning. Coast Guard Radio. Oh no, it's it's like ra uh, radar. Three band Russian start. What is this? More obnoxious noises. many British uh, amateur radio operators communicating right now? Take a look at a different band. Uh, 
Yikes, that's... That's annoying. Wow, the whole antenna is getting a lot of interference. Sounds like popcorn or rain, yeah. Wow, what happened to this antenna? Is that the whole thing? Looks like it's just certain frequencies just started getting a ton of interference of some kind. del brazo de Octavio Paz, abandonó el mar, la playa, tomó un tren que se dirigía a la Ciudad de México, se ocultó en un bebedero de ese tren, fue arrojado en el mar. I don't think the antenna is important enough that someone would like actively try to interfere. Buscó el apartamento del poeta en la capital mexicana. Beacon. Let's see what it's saying. This isn't a person, this is most likely just a, a thing that does this forever. I can sometimes just Makes it way easier. This is D E S V O Desvo D E S V O. Oh, D S V O. So I was correct. Usually, just like a because they call these beacons where it's like they're just reserving a signal or reserving a frequency for use somewhere else. So it just repeats that. There's just so many signals all the time that you could listen to. Um, last few things I'll do is this guy's channel. He does a lot of what I was just doing, except he keeps track of <clears throat> particularly weird things.
just saying S over and over again. Wait, wait, wait. A lot of these are weird relative to how the stations normally behave. See if I can find one that's interesting if you don't follow up. Uh, decoding the NWS test pattern. He's getting an image out of this. It's a fax. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not going to be a dick pic. Fast forward a bit. So it's producing an image. DQ, CQ, CQ from NMC. Like a certificate from the National Weather Service. That's what he received from that. Uh, radio simile charts follow. I've gotten some maps uh, from shortwave before where it'll just see like a really simple map that just shows weather patterns and like predicted wind strengths and things like that. Sounds like a baud modem signal. Yeah, a lot of times when an image is being produced and things like faxes and other forms like that, they'll have this very obvious cadence to them where it's like dint, 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 dint. it's like I think it's in order to keep like the pixel insistency the same all throughout so it doesn't get stretched or something like that but a lot of sounds that produce images tend to look like that like we were doing SSTV earlier um like here oh my god <laughs> been trying to get Morse code out of everything we've been listening to there's lots of E's and T's. Extraterrestrial confirmed. Um, uh, like in theory. Here, let me, I'm gonna switch to my splash screen a sec. Um, here we go. Okay. So if I wanted to send an SSTV signal, I would totally send this image from The Sims 1. The end is near, make preparations, okay. So now the program can generate this as well. Ah, why is it so long? And this is what the signal would sound like. Now this could be very loud. I'll try to anticipate it. Get ready to transmit. Oh! Uh, okay, there. Sorry. <laughs> so I could record this audio and send it to somebody, and then they could decrypt it and get this frightening image.
can hear the sound change as it reaches the different color values and shapes. Yeah, but SSTV also does that sort of cadence thing. Like din 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 um, There was, when I was looking at this earlier... Excuse me? No, 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 no. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, I hate this commercial. I want you to learn how to decode these pictures by ear. Yeah! I'm sure someone can. There's a whole documentary about that particular number station called the Lincolnshire Poacher. Thank you for the follow, Grumpus Maximus. Cryptographers and shortwave enthusiasts have known about them for years, wow, but this guy's one of voice. Radio's most enduring mysteries, Simon Fanshawe, now takes us to the outer limits of the bands and into the clandestine world of the number stations in tracking the Lincolnshire poacher. Three, nine, seven, one, five. Three, nine, seven, one. Okay, now that one is called the Swedish. Swedish something or other. And it's one that people consider to be one of the creepiest. Um, Swedish Rhapsody. And it doesn't help that the, the extremely viewed version of this number station has an image in place to, you know, influence your, your perspective of it. for the follow Jorstad. So this was real in broadcasting at one point. It's in German. So you know, German is very scary by itself. But this particular recording that's all over the internet is all warped, you know, how when the voices sound strange when I'm like messing with the tuning and everything. But, like someone who doesn't know that this is just how radio exists, they, it it adds it, bleh, it makes it that much creepier to watch if you don't understand what's happening or to listen to. Sorry. A very strange world. A world of alleged spooks and spies, of conspiracies and covert operations, of illicit transmissions across the globe to secret agents on undercover operations. Or perhaps just a world of fantasists in the grip of a Cold War hangover, imagining it all just to fulfill their big brotherly paranoia. Either way, what I'm about to show you is at the very least curious and possibly very scary indeed. 
Ever since the height of the Cold War, radio enthusiasts across the globe started to notice strange, beguiling broadcasts on the outer limits of the band, anonymous transmissions that all had a similar shape to them. Each had a call sign, followed by sets and sets of numbers, usually in groups of five. They are read aloud in disembodied, simulated voices, in languages ranging from English and Spanish to Czech and Chinese. Hour on hour, day after day, some so regular you could set your watch by them. They transmitted what people believed was code information and became known to shortwave radio enthusiasts as the number stations. They gave them suitably elliptical names. The Russian Man, Bulgarian Betty, Swedish Rhapsody, the English Lady, and the Lincolnshire Poacher. And they're still on the air today in their hundreds. One man in particular became obsessed by them, Akin Fernandez. And several years ago, he started to record, collect, and archive them in what he called the CONET project. Number stations are believed to be the encrypted transmissions of secret services like MI5, the CIA, and Mossad to their agents in the field. Have you ever even got close to understanding what you're listening to? No, nobody's been able to decode a number station as far as I know. Have there emerged patterns in terms of the shape in which they're broadcast and the different categories? And is there a very obvious picture that they all have kind of family resemblances in the, each of the categories? Absolutely right. Three, five, they are the ones that transmit five, with a voice. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah, I was going to just respond to Skella Corgi. Yeah, that's... Um it's kind of the thing is that number stations have become really popular and it's pretty easy to make them yourself relatively easy well there's i'm sure there's lots of like fan number stations that don't have any correlation um to any actual military operations or secret agent stuff it's just people kind of setting stuff up in order to be creepy but it's still it's really illegal to do and if you are caught you know, broadcasting an unlicensed signal, um, especially if it's not on an amateur radio band, like, the FCC will just annihilate you. Like, they're famous for going and shutting down stations and fining people thousands of dollars because they're broadcasting stuff they're not supposed to. So it's very dangerous to do. It's, like, silly as it seems. Like, ooh, there's some spooky stuff. It's not like the Internet when you just throw some creepy video online and hope someone gets scared by it. Like... FCC is like a big deal, uh, the Federal Communications Commission, which they they police the airwaves, and I think they also have their hands in like the internet and stuff too. Um, but uh, there was like a I there's no way I'd be able to find it, but there was this one video on YouTube that talked about, or that was a video of a guy tracking a radio jammer because also jamming stations is very illegal to do because it can interfere with like police radio uh firefighters you know, like any kind of emergency services but it also interferes just with people's cb radios and all around a very bad thing to do but this video i saw long ago was a guy in his car with like a signal analyzer thing and he could track the strength of this jammer that was playing and occasionally the jammer would go offline and then there'd be some like kids just like swearing and just saying all kinds of like goofy stuff because they knew what they were doing and they're like uh, trying to look for conversations and people talking like we were just doing and then they would turn the jammer on and just completely obliterate the person's conversation which is really illegal so anyway in this video this guy is driving around in the streets and he can figure out where the jammer is coming from. You can see the strength get higher and lower depending on what streets he was on. And he eventually goes down like this like dirt path into the woods and he gets outside this home. And you see this like house in the distance with like lights on inside and the signal strength is like at an all time high in his analyzer. So he, he found where these kids were and were jamming. And I'm pretty sure that uh, he must have like called the police or something afterwards so it's like and i'm sure whoever owns that antenna probably got their license revoked for letting kids 
just mess around with it and interfere with signals and things like that. So it's like it's a pretty serious deal. But by doing a number station, you could like potentially go to jail. Um, well, the one that I showed was the guy, yeah, Ducks the one where he was tracking his own pirate radio station. That one's cool too. And it's funny that it, it turns out to just be like a self-promotion at the end. Uh, but this one was about a radio jammer. One, one, five, There's the ones that transmit in Morse. And there are other types that transmit some kind of noise or bleep. And is there a schedule? I mean, a sort of number stations, radio schedule. time. <laughs> some of them do work on a schedule, a very rigid schedule. In fact, it's so rigid you could set your watch to it. Others don't appear to have a schedule. They appear seemingly randomly. And the only reason why we have any schedules at all is because people are very studiously monitoring these stations and then making detailed logs. People like you, for example. It was almost therapeutic. It's something that I had to get out of my system. I was spending hours and hours in front of the radio making these recordings and putting this together and putting it out in the public has more or less cured me, I think. Joaquin Fernandez is not alone in his fascination with the number stations. Shortwave sleuth Simon Mason discovered them as a teenager and has been riveted by them ever since. I was fascinated by the noises and the different stations and all the different weird sounds that came out of it. And gradually I began to make sense of it. There were broadcast stations like the BBC World Service and Voice of America in one section. And then there was another section that neatly held all the shipping traffic. And then somewhere in between there were these strange stations playing weird melodies. And bizarre Bavarian vehicle music, followed by these people reading out five-figure numbers. And this was, uh, what date are we talking about? We're talking about the early 70s. And what was even more notable about these is that nobody knew what they were. You'd read books, there was nothing in books. You could ask anybody you liked and no one knew anything about them. Curiouser and curiouser. Even though no one seems to know exactly when number stations began, they didn't just start bleeping out of nowhere. Oh, the use of it is. I was wondering why, like, the correlation, or why there's just, like, repeating stuff. Yeah, it is. It's just the video's repeating. Good eye. Well, anyway, this is mostly audio-oriented. Shortwave uh, radio in espionage, a low-tech but effective means of transmitting coded data, is in a great John Buchan 39 Steps tradition, which dates back at least to the Second World War. This was a time when radio transmissions could be decoded and deciphered to convey amazing information about the enemy, as signals expert and cryptographer Owen Lewis told me. If you go back, for example, to World War II, I seem to remember that the BBC stopped broadcasting Big Ben live. And they took a recording of Big Ben at each hour and they simply played the recording. They never ever did it live. And the reason for that was to stop the Germans extracting meteorological information from the sound of Big Ben. What you're saying is that you can extract information from anything. Is you, that your point? You can extract information of some sort. You get a big bell being struck. The amount of water, for example, in the air at that moment will affect the way that it mm. sounds and the amount of echo that you get. The clouds may affect it. Okay, that is incredible. Apparently, we didn't gather what they were just talking about, that during World War II, the BBC used to broadcast the Big Ben chiming in real time. They stopped because Germans could potentially uh, take the signal and be able to figure out weather patterns that are happening over London based on the way that the thing sounds just by like rain and all of that that's unbelievable christine large is the trust director at the home of the enigma codebreakers bletchley park people have been trying to keep information and messages secret for just about as long as recorded history goes back at least to the egyptians and to the greeks and there were some very basic methods. One of them was shaving a messenger's head, writing a message, letting the hair grow back, and sending off the messenger to deliver it. 
in the Second World War, a very good example of the work that was done here at Bletchley Park is that in connection with Abwehr Enigma and breaking that particular system. And amateur radio listeners were used. The operation that they had was eventually known as the Radio Security Service, the RSS, and it had headquarters in Wormwood Scrubs, as it happened. But these amateur listeners intercepted traffic that had messages which were destined for Hitler and his generals. And the information that they gained from that enabled us to arrest incoming German spies. All around the globe, number stations are still very much on the air. Finding them isn't difficult either. You just need a radio and an open sky, or in this case, a back alley in Kensal Rise and Simon Mason. You normally have to come to an alleyway in the back of somewhere like Kensal Rise in order to try and do this surreptitiously. No, I'm usually in a um, conservatory in East Yorkshire. What, the bottom of your garden? Yes, that's right, yes. I've got a long wire in the back of the garden that boosts a signal. The radio here is saying that it's 1359, so obviously we're waiting for 1400, which is 2 o'clock in English, because it happens on the hour. You've just got a perfectly ordinary radio here. It's an all band radio from long wave right up to the top of the short wave band continuously. Four seconds to go. Oh! That is the Lincoln Supercher. That's quite bizarre. So we'll get the tune, and then in a moment the numbers will start. Between 1400 and 1410, it's a one five figure header that, that tells you what message it is. And then at 1410, it sends 200 five figure groups, which is the message proper. And how do you know that? Well, I've studied the Lincoln Departure for about uh, 16 years. So its habits are always well known. It's always fixed, it always broadcasts at the same times and same frequencies, always 200 five figure groups. It does that because it doesn't alert anyone in the world to any events that it might relate to. So it's always 200 five-figure groups where there's nothing going on or there's all hell going on. So weird, because you suddenly hear the numbers go. You suddenly hear this strange voice. Is that a woman or a man? I can't... Zero, six, three. It's a synthesised female voice. It's not a real person. It's just a voice computer. Four, seven, five. There have been cases where real people have been reading the numbers out, but most of them now use automated numbers. This is all pure conjecture, of course, because no, the people behind this station don't broadcast that they're the perpetrators. No one has ever come out on the number station well that admitted to being the sender of a broadcast. Well, there it is, the Lincolnshire Poacher Live. I don't know if I want to show the entire thing, because there's a lot left. Um, I definitely recommend checking this out if you just search Lincolnshire Poacher uh, I I've watched this whole thing before no yeah to be one of the biggest radio pirates in the history of radio because these transmissions are unlicensed and he's been violating laws all over the world I and mean, that is not satisfying for anybody who wants a reasonable explanation the book and of course make it even more complicated and it has been narrowed down um, that the Lincolnshire poacher comes from Cyprus, I'm pretty sure. Wouldn't be a Number stations offer several security benefits. Bletchley Park Trust Director, Christine Large. One of them is that the equipment that's being used, if it were found in any situation, wouldn't be recognized as anything irregular. So therefore, a landlady or landlord making a cleaning visit to somebody's room wouldn't pick up that there's anything strange going on and report it back. All they would see would be an ordinary piece of radio kit that could be bought virtually anywhere. I'm still not convinced. Not because I live in a hidey world of plat twirling innocence where governments just don't do this kind of thing. I'm sure they do. But where is the evidence that behind the number stations lurk states and their secret agencies? I pressed the signals expert, Owen Lewis, for a definitive answer. Not with any great success. Those who use wireless for communications very often use codes or ciphers to disguise what it is they're saying and so other people can't understand. This is not just military, it's not just government. Commercial organizations, including, for example, fishing fleets, have used codes and ciphers for a long time. Two, two, five, one. All right, so to what conclusion does that lead us about who might be doing it? 
it doesn't give us any indication as to who is doing it except that they want communication at international ranges. All right, but I've asked you the question about three or four times now, and every time what you do is describe the method of communication, the distance of communication, but who do you think might actually be doing it? Quite simply, someone who wishes to have a private conversation. Well, it's a one way, it's not a conversation, it's a monologue. It's a one way passage of information. But what sort of information might it be? Whatever they want to use it for. Well, I'm still not getting any definite answers over here. So let's try Minneapolis and the renowned security technologist, Bruce. What? That's where I live. Schneier, while Akin Fernandez ranges across the Don in London. Bruce, you can't my identify man. who the recipient is or where they might be. The recipient could be anywhere, you know, maybe what, a third of the planet where that radio signal gets to. So as a covert channel, it works very well. Tell me what's 7.614, Akim, in the little display. I'll have to get Bruce on the stream sometime, and he'll be like, you know, here's my life's work looking into cryptology and all these things. Like, why do you want me on the stream? And I'll be like, well, there's a video game that has, like, some weird-sounding, like, you know, voices reading numbers and stuff. Do you, like, do you know the answer? He'd be like, I'm going home. Play on the front. That's a shortwave frequency on this shortwave radio. It's interesting for you to see this setup right now because, as you can see, I'm sitting in the middle of London, and if I was involved in espionage, I could just set up my little tiny radio right inside the room anonymously, transcribe my message, the message is over, turn off the radio, and go back about my business being a spy. Well, here's what I was just talking about. That's China. What is that? Is that sort of more common wise in Chinese, do you think? What's going on there? Bruce, I've spent some time listening to the Conet project and these number stations. How are these things encrypted and decrypted? It's a manual paper pencil system. You'd imagine that the hell? some agent who's in the field somewhere is told to listen on the frequency at a certain time and get the message. And if you listen to the number stations, you'll notice that sequences are repeated. Three, five, three, five. And the idea would be you wouldn't know exactly when your numbers are going to be broadcasted. So you'll listen and you'll get your message. And then you will have some manual system that you've been taught where you can decrypt the message and find out what your orders are, what your instructions are, whatever it is that you have to know. It may all sound very low tech, this. But the manual paper and pencil system that's called a one-time pad, because each one is only used once, is utterly secure. And moreover, there's definite evidence that spies use it. In 1988, Erwin van Harlem, a Czech agent posing as a Bond Street art dealer, was caught by a special branch with a one-time pad hidden inside a bar of soap. And he was found guilty. But at least his hands were clean. At any rate, it's a devilishly simple system. I'm going to go down to lower frequencies to see if we can find something down there. In a one-time pad, you have a sequence of numbers in front of you, and you receive a sequence of numbers off the shortwave radio in this case. One, five, seven, two, eight. One, five, seven, two, eight. And then you subtract the numbers you receive from the numbers on your pad, and that gives you another set of numbers, and that's the plain text. And there's some easy way of converting numbers to letters and letters to numbers. One equals A, two equals B, something as trivial as that. That's mathematically unbreakable. And there's no way, short of getting a copy of the pad, for an attacker to know what the proper message is. Christine Large. There are different forms of one-time pads. The printed ones often matchbox size but rather a lot thinner you can get them on microfilm and they can be stored for example in a hollowed out pencil in a coin in a bar of soap in a book lots of imaginative places another feature of one time pads is they have to be easy to destroy so whether it's rice paper or whether as rumored the americans have one that turns into strips of chewing gum you've got to be able to dispose of them very easily so that means in a sense that agents will actually eat their words or their numbers so number stations are indecipherable to anyone without the pad that makes sense of the puzzle and even the pad can be turned into a sort of on-the-run snack for spies 
But even if we can't ever work out what the number stations mean, Akin and I are still... Two. There you go. Three, four, nine, six, seven, four. Number station. Four. That's quite bizarre, isn't it? You get kind of very, very sceptical at that point, and then suddenly we hit that. This is a number station that I actually haven't heard before. Okay, so how do you know you haven't heard it before? Because I know the sounds of all the, all the number stations, well, all the ones that I've heard before. And look at the signal. The signal's very, very, you mean the, the thing is right over in the left. That's a very, very strong well, signal. It's, if you look at it now, it, it's quite strong. This is a quite a strong signal. I just don't believe it. Groups of five numbers spoken in English by a mechanical voice that is a male voice. We can note down the frequency. Which is 9.359. Wait a minute. The carrier is still there. The transmitter is still on. We just heard six zeros, zero, 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 which means the end of the transmission. So God, there's a kind of weird drama to this. It's quite strange. It is absolutely unbelievable. A number station that is new to me. Just at random. That's really wild. That really, really is wild. Well. See, everyone listening to the stream right now, I'm not crazy. I didn't just make up all the stuff I was talking about earlier. Look, at they confirmed just about everything that I just talked about. Um, I'll post the link do this video in the Ludo Crypto Discord if anyone interested. Uh, but also, uh, there is someone got a hold of one of the devices that does the broadcasting, or at least an example of one, and it's pretty cool to see. It's old technology. This kind of device would be attached to a broadcasting antenna and it would just be fed directly into a radio. But this box, it is like its own contained speech synthesis thing. It has memory and it can memorize sequences of things. Um, would then be the brain behind it all. Standard, yes. Input, tape reader, no. Monitor, yes. Morse, dot, and dash, yes. Must be German. And the other mode. recognize all those sounds that's the morse for each of the numbers um because like morse code numbers are just uh five characters you know either dots or dashes like five is five dots one is uh dit da 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 and then dit dit da 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 dit 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 da da dit 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 da dit 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 and then it goes starts with dashes when it gets to sixes da dit 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 da da dit 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 da 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 dit dit and then da 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 dit then zero is just Five dashes. I'm trying to think. I should 
could end with. I guess there isn't much else that I want to do right now. I kind of want to go tune in, check out what uh, Vincento is doing. This is another channel that you definitely should check out. I'll put that in the Discord also. Also, this whole time, um, been listening to winter noises, so that's not totally silent. Funny thing is that the uh, the game is still running. See if anything happened. Oops, sorry, that was my headphones. Anything change? Well, I'm gonna jump. And I survived. Russians are invincible. No sign of Mr. Plow. I think he's just gone forever. Uh, this is the game that I started the stream with. This is It's Winter. Um, if you go back, I'm going to upload the VOD to YouTube. It'll be on Twitch also. I started by playing this. It's a really cool little like atmospheric game. Uh, it didn't appear to have a whole lot to it. Oh, the audio's turned off. Um, it just has really detailed little interactions when you're in your apartment. I run up real quick. But I couldn't find anything outside of the interactions. Uh, with like physics objects. That's my apartment. Wait, what? Oh, because I jumped out my window. That's what the mailbox is for. The key to my apartment is in the mailbox. That's something new. Oh, I missed this message before too. What does it say? Um Konyesh wait, Kon Kanishka? Kanishka, I'm not sure what that Kanyesh Kanyeshna Kanishka. Huh. So I'm going to sign off for now. Hope you all enjoyed just the weirdness of looking through radio waves and things like that. Um, it's just a subject I obviously can talk about forever and for long periods of time. And, uh, and I think I recommend anyone who's interested in it should check it out. It's a good place to start, especially if you're going from the number station perspective. It goes to priom.com which is, I'll put a link in chat, which is a place that keeps track of number stations. And then from Priyom, you can get to the, um, put it in the Discord also. From Priyom, you can get to 
the world receiver map, which is where I was going to to get all the different SDRs, which is like the browser-based radio antennas that you can access. Uh, and then from there, you could just do all the browsing and decoding that you want. And the decoder I was using tonight is called... Uh, come on. It's called Multi-PSK. And unfortunately, a lot of the software out there is all paid. And it has like obnoxious things. Where it's like you can only use the software for 10 minutes and then it locks up completely. The multi-PSK, as far as I can tell, does not have any limitations behind it. Um, so uh, you can keep using it forever, and it seems to be the most robust. Some of the other ones I was using, there's um, Mix or Mix W, M I X W. That one's pretty good, also. But that probably the most famous one is called F L Digi, F L D I G I. I wasn't really a fan of that. I like multi-PSK better, even if its interface is like an abomination. Um, I'm going to host Mr. Vine Sauce because I'm going to go check out his stream. I'm sure a lot of you are, are actually watching it right now. Um, so if you want to, you know, this, uh, this stream was the one year anniversary of my discord called Ludo Crypto. We're into all kinds of weird, mysterious stuff, just like you saw on stream tonight. Also like ARGs, alternate reality games and Easter eggs and all of that. So, uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, I put a link in the chat, discord.gg, and then, you know, you see that whole deal. And I always like put notifications in there when I'm streaming and like plans for streams and sometimes which we haven't for a long time but sometimes we have hangout nights where we go to rabbit and we like watch like black mirror or something on uh, Netflix together so I can stay tuned to that I might try to do one in the near future but anyway uh, thank you everybody for coming and have a good night.